members of parliament. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. From Betty Davis's first role as a piece of chocolate cake in the 1931 film Palmy Days to the discovery of Niagara Falls in 1996, The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On May 16, 1929, the first Academy Awards were handed out in categories such as Greatest Achievement in Blackface, Best Catholic Whipping Scene, and Most Gorgeous Gams on Abroad. The highlight of the night occurred when Wings won the award for Best Picture without a single Dago, Tar Baby, or Wetback. And on May 15, 1940, the first McDonald's opened in San Bernardino, California, back when a young Grimace was just working as a cashier. And that was what happened this week in history. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, history is actually pretty racist. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive there on the site. You can actually create the content. So what you see on the front page was placed there by listeners like you. Maybe it's a blog post, news item, YouTube video, whatever it is you want to submit that you think we'll find interesting or our listeners would also enjoy. You can submit it over at freetalklive.com. Do it with a free Reddit-based system. Again, freetalklive.com is a free website, unlike a lot of those uh, sites in the talk radio business. With you tonight in the studio, it's Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. Ellen's here from ALP and Daryl from FPP. We can explain those things a little bit later on. The toll-free number tonight again is 855-450-FREE. Coming up tonight, an update in the market basket conflict, I guess we could call it that. There's like this internal conflict in this grocery chain in the Northeast that has bubbled over into a, an external conflict, I guess. Like there, w- the internal conflict was the family members that own the company, uh, this grocery chain called Market Basket, fighting over control of the company, and that has resulted in the CEO being ousted. This very popular CEO, so popular in fact, that people were protesting his ouster. Like the employees of Market Basket and even the customers, some of them. Yeah, are protesting it, this. It wasn't even just the CEO. It was also some of the other top-ranking officials that were in the company, and uh, you know, that's true. There was also a lot of employees that were laid off after this happened. I hadn't heard about all the employees, but I'm not surprised by it. We talked about it in great detail earlier this week. I on thought Tuesday. a bunch of the employees just stopped going to work. That's true as well. There are a lot of employees who are essentially they're walked out of work. They're protesting. They're basically saying, "We'll come back on the job when you rehire." the CEO. And a lot of the employees that are still working there, there's no work for them to do, so they stand outside striking because there's no products for them to stock. All the yeah, shelves I guess are the pretty sh- much empty. The warehouse staff at some point went on strike. And the, the interesting thing about this, I mean there's a s- several different interesting aspects. We'll jump into the update here in the story in a moment, just kind of bring you up to speed if it's the first time you're hearing about this. It's been developing for decades. But it's really splashed in the last couple of weeks where the, the, walk, the walkouts, the work stoppages, uh, food not being delivered to the stores, shelves being empty, that kind of thing. So it's really propelled itself into the mainstream because a lot of people shop at these stores. They're very, very popular places to go. They are cheap. Uh, they've got the brand name items that most people are used to, but you know, they've got a very efficient business model and they're able to offer those products cheaper to their customers. So naturally, customers are upset about this. and. The employees love this CEO because he really took kind of took care of them. I guess they have like an employee ownership program or some sort of a profit sharing plan that one year there was, you know, it was kind of a tough year, I suppose, and there were there was a forty million dollar loss in that profit sharing plan. The CEO who's now ousted, Arthur T. DeMola, so the former CEO, he offered to or he did fill that forty million dollar gap with his own uh, his own money. As I understood it, 
and maybe it was the store's money, but whatever. He found some. He put forty million dollars from somewhere and put it into that employee account to shore it up to make sure that they were, you know, they still had the same bonuses that they were used to, even though the store didn't, you know, there was a downturn or something like that. So one thing that I don't understand about this entire situation is the people saying, "I'm just not going to work anymore." Mm-hmm. I, I I have never understood. The whole thing of I'm not going to work anymore. Why because not? if you're not going to work anymore, you're not getting paid anymore. Well, I don't imagine they're going to get paid for not working. Right, but it makes absolutely no economic sense. Well, they're not going to get paid, but they're also taking away from the business's profits by not putting in their labor. Well, if anything, not having labor, labor is one of the largest costs that a business has to incur. So having labor be down, labor costs being down actually would, in theory, help profits if sales were the same, which of course they're not because people are walking out of the store. Customers aren't coming in. Uh, you actually went there recently, Ellen, and I'm not a I market did. basket shopper, so I don't go there. I mean, at the most, I go there irregularly when I happen to be nearby and for whatever reason. But you actually went down specifically to check out the scene and see what was happening down there. Yes. Um so my when was this? This week? Yeah, this was earlier this week. I believe it was on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, me and one of my friends, we drove down there because we heard about this whole strike uh, going on. And I wasn't sure if it had affected the Swansea market basket because it's kind of a smaller one. So we went there just to investigate, see what was going on. And uh, when you first walk in, it's not that noticeable because they have... I mean, it's noticeable that the shelves are short of a few items but they've pushed it all forward Mm -hmm. and closer together but then there's sections that are completely closed off because they're empty and you realize that they're just like compacting all of the goods to make it seem like the shelves are still full but there's large areas where there's just no product the sections that are empty the pictures i saw online looked more like produce and maybe meat section what were you seeing that was actually empty was it the perishables uh yeah it was mostly perishables um there was some things like like dairy products were you know, somewhat stocked, but mm. when you go over to the fruit and vegetable section, that's really where it was completely empty. Like, they weren't getting any of the things that they get in daily anymore. And um, we we headed outside, and I actually got to talk with a few of the employees, and they said that they were uh, protesting because Arthur T., in their eyes, is the good guy because, you know, he pays for all the groceries up front instead of taking out credit like oh, most really? grocery stores do. Yeah. Wow. So that's how he was able to give everyone a 4% discount. You know, when you go shopping at Market Basket, it's automatic that you get a 4% discount. On I had heard about this. It's very, very strange to me. This is a relatively new thing that they're doing there? No. I, I As far as I know, this has always been going on because... How does that I think work? they started it last year. But how does that work? I mean, a 4%... I mean, if you tell your customers, everything's 4% off, and then you take 4% off at the register, or is it 4% right, off no. is already at... They they take the four percent off at the register. That's interesting. Yes. So in New Hampshire, on the but the shelf prices are already cheaper on a lot of stuff, right? That's on be- some stuff. Yeah, I mean, some of the things are cheaper. I mean, I wouldn't hmm. claim that everything is, but uh, I I of prefer to shop at Market Basket because to me it's cheaper than most other places. Okay. And um, also, the worker said that Arthur has always paid the employees very well, and uh, they wanted to get him back into the CEO position, so they're having people sign this petition, mm-hmm. and they're all waving signs outside. And we, some of them said like Arthur T is the good guy, and like get him back in. And uh, I saw signs like, you know, the the Obama posters when he was running for office that was like red and blue yeah. and his face, and it said I believe underneath. There's some like that, but it says I believe we're out of like a certain product or something. <laughs> Now, how, many, pizza. how many employees were out there protesting? And are you sure they were employees? But were there some customers there protesting with them? What uh, was your yes, assessment there? Uh, they they told me that they were employees. They mm-hmm. were actually clocked in while they were <gasps> striking, and they wow. got kind of nervous when I asked them about that. So I knew I was heading in the right direction. But uh, oh, that just goes to show how far it actually goes. Like all of the managers are in on this too. Like right. everybody's angry. Well, that's the thing with this, Daryl. I mean, you were to go back to Daryl's question of like, why would people not go to work? Well, it's interesting. Apparently, here they are at work. No, the question wasn't why would people not do it. My question is, as an employee, you know, it makes no economic sense to me if I were one of the employees. Well, it's a gamble. 
I said, I'm not going to work this week. Yeah. Well, I'm not getting paid this week, which means that I'm not going to be able to, you know, like survive next week. So, first of all, the scenario you're talking about doesn't apply here, right? Because these guys are getting paid. They're going clocking in, going outside and holding signs as part of their job, apparently. I have never heard of anybody on strike that was getting paid to be on strike. Well, the thing is, they don't have any work to do. There's nothing for them to stock. There's hardly any customers. What are they going to do? Shuffle around a broom all day? Okay, but that's different than not showing up to work. What I had heard was that the employees just weren't showing up to work anymore. Some of them aren't. I mean, that's probably true for some of them, yeah. yeah. But obviously, there's a lot that are still interested in working there. And in the the case of what their motivation seems to be, Daryl, is that they. They're gambling here. I mean, they really, really, really care about this CEO being in charge of this company, and they're willing to obviously put their jobs on the line. They're, they're willing to put the entire business on the line. We'll come back with more here. Well, the, their argument would be that it was the board of directors put the business on the line by giving the guy the boot and pissing everybody off. 855 450 free. Update on it coming up in moments. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that? Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, July 25th, 2014, gold opened at 1295.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1342.71, 671.35 for half ounce, or 335.68 for a quarter ounce. That's 1342.71, 671.35, and 335.68. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. 
By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Got a lot of features waiting for you there. You can actually join us via Skype on the radio here. You can dial in to username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request first. It will be approved, and it'll be easy for you to get on with us from that point forward. Also, it's easy for you to get a free pound of coffee. Just go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can place the order there with BuzzBox. Shade grown, 100% organic, top 1% great Arabica. This is great coffee. BuzzBox also does something special. They actually take a portion of the profits that they make from selling this coffee and they pour that in a couple different things. There's a co-op that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee business and also a, a microloan program through World Vision, where every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com means one microloan going out to people in uh, very tough parts of the world to live, and that helps people make a better life for themselves. You can really change lives with this coffee. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get your free pound. You just have to pay the shipping cost, and it will be sent to you. Hopefully, you'll like it. You'll be on the auto ship program at that point. You can cancel your subscription at any time. Go to coffee. Dot freetalklive.com. And by the way, when you're getting the auto ship from them, you can adjust the frequency of how often you would like to receive and how much of the coffee you would like to receive. So keep that in mind. Coffee.freetalklive.com. As we continue here, Ellen, you were telling us about your experience going to Market Basket, which normally would be a standard grocery store experience. But these days, you're entering a protest zone where employees are bizarrely on the clock, but yet outside holding signs. I had heard when we were talking about this on Tuesday that in some stores, when you enter the store, there's signage up in the store that encourages customers to contact the board and demand the reinstatement of the CEO in this case. Yes, when I went there, that was all outside. There was no signs hmm. or people protesting inside. There was a lot of people standing by the road holding signs. Hmm. And... Um, I actually, when I got to interview the two employees that I was talking with, you can hear in the background there's so many people honking their horns. Wow. There's a lot of people who support this protest that's going on, and I think I think everyone's pretty upset about this. Like, uh, apparently Arthur was a very good CEO. He and must have been. He treated his employees very well and you kept prices low. You don't see this happening in most companies. I mean, when one CEO gets replaced by another, it's just a non-event. I mean, it doesn't really mean much. It's just somebody else pulling the strings at the top. But when somebody makes an impression like this upon employees, look at the extent they're willing to go to. I mean, they literally are putting their jobs on the line here. This They're putting the entire business on the line. Yeah. And I agree. The board is to blame on this as well. But right. it the seems board as fired though, the CEO, and that's right. what sparked this. It, it seems to me that you know, between the board and the employees, the people that are dependent upon Market Basket to stay around as a company, they don't really care whether the company goes under. They just want to make a point. Right. Well, these these employees are very devoted because they've been treated so well. And um, I believe that Arthur actually offered to buy the company. That's the but news that I was going to give you here. That's the, the, the latest turnaround in the story is the perspective of the employees and these customers is, hey, board members, you screwed this up. You fired this guy who everybody loved. You brought in an executive from Radio Shack and an executive from Albertsons, and you gave them the dual CEO position. So Wait, they the, brought in somebody from Radio yes. Shack, a company that's going under? Well, yeah. <laughs> Radio Shack's closing like a thousand stores this year. <laughs> that's not exactly a thriving yeah. business. <laughs> so they uh, apparently the guy from Radio Shack got himself a golden parachute and uh, shot himself over to Market Basket. But they fired the CEO, 
And then they hired two CEOs, and now they have co-CEOs. I mean, you talk about just that alone. Even if the even if the guy wasn't a beloved CEO, bringing on two CEOs just seems like one of those dumb corporate moves, right? Like, what yeah. the hell do you need two, that, guy, two guys This reminds for? me of something that happened in Alabama several years ago when the Bruno's supermarket, and our listeners in Alabama, they'll definitely know what I'm talking about. That doesn't sound like it's mob run or anything. Go ahead. No, the last name of the family was Bruno. Yeah. And the family wound up selling the company. The people that bought the company wound up selling the warehouses and then renting space from the warehouses that they just sold. Crazy. Yeah, and they did a whole bunch of other asinine things that made absolutely no sense. Mm. And essentially, you know, they were running the business into, into the, the ground, ground intentionally. Why would they do that? It's, what what profit their money? is that? <laughs> yeah. Because I know that they fired Arthur because they wanted to make the shareholders more profit. Because because the way that he runs his business is very efficient. He pays he pays the employees well. He doesn't use credit. Uh, everybody gets the discount. That's not really making the people who own the larger portions of the shares that much more money but how does sure going in debt make anybody more money other than the credit card companies like if i've got stock in ellen co and you decide you know what i'm gonna start taking out a lot of debt and i'm somehow supposed to get higher dividends like that math doesn't make sense to me that doesn't make sense to me either i don't know why they would do that but well, it was a family thing. Like, remember, I mentioned the beginning of the conversation here, and, and we are kind of recompressing a conversation we had on on Tuesday. It was much longer, though. We really went into the back history of the family. There's this fight that uh, involved two sides of the Demolis family. One guy ended up dying, not in a fight, just on his own heart attack or something like that. And uh, and then the other side got screwed by the dad, the other one that was left, and his sons are the ones that, or no, one of his sons is one of the guys, and the other son. Anyway, they've been fighting. I don't want to get into all the, the family drama. You can go back and listen to the Tuesday show for that. But ultimately, the guy who was the CEO, this good guy, was the son of a not-so-good guy. Uh, the guy who screwed over the other side of the family. So the other side of the family, having still been butthurt from being screwed over by Arthur T. DeMullis' dad, you know, it's payback time. They finally, his cousin, who's also named Arthur, got control of the board and then ousted his cousin Arthur T. DeMullis. So there's Arthur S. DeMullis, who's the bad cousin, and Arthur T. DeMullis, who's the good one, who was the CEO who got ousted. Did that I explain so that okay? So the board is... Trying to kill the company because somebody is butthurt that their cousin. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't say that they thought. I don't think they thought it was going to, you know, result in this. I think they just figured they were going to trade out a CEO. Well, from what and I heard, they knew beforehand that if they got rid of Arthur T. Damula, really, middle management had said, if you get rid of him, we walk. Really? Your stores don't function anymore. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't realize that. And so the that. board went ahead and made Did their stupid anyway. decision. You know, and so middle management were... walked away, so trucks couldn't fired. get right. sent because nothing could get ordered because there's no managers. You know, maybe they thought they were just bluffing because that's a very strong move to make. Yeah, it is. So it's been fascinating to watch this. Here's the latest news uh, from BostonGlobe.com, and this hit yesterday. Arthur T. DeMolis on Wednesday said he will make an offer, and he has done that, by the way, now, to buy the Market Basket supermarket chain, seeking to regain control of the fractured company and end the decades-long family feud that has exploded into an extraordinary public spectacle this month. Uh, we'll continue with the latest on the Market Basket drama that is continuing to unfold here. I think this is a smart move on his part, very generous, actually, as well. 855 450 free. It really makes him look like a good guy. It's Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. 
Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative freedomsphoenix.com constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways with liberty and property under constant attack freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda and it encourages the participation of its readers go to freedomsphoenix.com that's freedoms with an s phoenix.com freedomsphoenix.com the revolution between the ears has already happened Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at Forum.LRN.FM. That's Forum.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, ridiculous audio from a news crew in New York that was trying to film at a uh, like a historic grounds of some sort, some sort of a park, some kind of historic building. But apparently there was an old jail nearby, and because they were shooting in the direction of the old jail, the government bureaucrats decided it was time to crack down on this freedom of the press thing. We'll uh, give you the audio here in a little bit. Well, because only terrorists wind up filming buildings. Exactly. So we'll share that for you. But giving you an update right now on the Demoulis situation, Market Basket is... Uh, the store. It is a chain of grocer uh, grocery stores in the Northeast, actually Massachusetts, New Hampshire, I think. 
They have something like 70, 80 stores. So this is a fairly busy, fairly successful chain. Now, not so busy. Now, food actually not on the shelves in some cases. Some some shelves have food, but others, like the produce section, are nearly barren. Ellen was actually at one of these stores recently checking it out, also talking to some of the employees who, bizarrely, are outside holding protest signs handing out petitions to customers. And by the way, we didn't mention this in the last segment, but we talked about it on Tuesday night. These petitions, if they're the ones that I saw online, are little red sheets of paper that say something like, I you know, pledge that I will not shop at Market Basket until the CEO is reinstated. The, the petition that I signed, it was basically, um, it said at the top, uh, Basically, just that you want Arthur to be reinstated as the CEO, and there was a list where people could sign their names, and mm. uh, I, I signed my name on there because I think, you know, like, the employees, it, like, if this business is being run so well that the employees are this devoted to staying, and they want they want the customers to have the best experience they can there, like, that means a lot to people. I think so. I mean, it really does. I don't generally shop at Market Basket because... It's a little further away than the other grocery stores. Right, that's because they want to be in the other city where they pay less tax. Right, and I just can't justify the extra cost of gas to go and mm-hmm. save, what, maybe 45 cents, a dollar. You know, the the savings aren't really worth it to me. Mm. Plus the fact that the corporation hired a lobbyist to go lobby in support of raising the fuel taxes that's in new right. hampshire that's right yeah uh makes but, it you know, seem as though you know but daryl you're gonna find something right like of every corporation if you dig enough you're gonna find something true. they've done that some way panders to the state or begs for a favor or begs for protectionism true i mean the more you dig the more you're gonna find and eventually right, but i didn't dig on that i was right. at the legislative committee no, hearing you were there. and the law firm of uh, Charles Bauer's law firm, the mm-hmm. guy that was the attorney for the city of Keene in the lawsuit against the Robin Hooders, right. was also the attorney in the lawsuit that Carla Garrick had filed against the town of Ware. That law firm yep. is the law firm that got hired by Market oh, Basket really? to lobby for these higher taxes. Mm. Well, like I said, you, you know, there's no perfect company out there. Agreed. The larger corporations, you know, if, if I were to boycott Walmart or Target or Home Depot based on something they did, then there would be nowhere to go and shop. Right. And then, of course, you can also boycott I am Amazon while you're at it because they've done something that has supported a sales oh, tax. Oh, I've got a love-hate somewhere. relationship with Amazon. So, I mean, you just got to take what you can get, you know? Yeah. I mean, you get if what you get. If they were closer, then I'd probably overlook the tax thing. If Amazon were closer? No, if Market Basket. Oh, market ba- <laughs> Instead of being like another mile and a half, two miles down yeah. the road from the other grocery well, stores. I know the grocery store I shop at, uh, Price Chopper, it's a union store. I mean, uh, from what I understand. Their prices aren't chopped. <laughs> I've shopped there a couple of times only because I was hungry at three o'clock in the morning and they and were the only hours. grocery store open. That's why yeah, I that's shop there. really the only benefit to it. And honestly, yeah. there's no other places that I know of in Keene that are open 24 hours. Not except for McDonald's. Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's. Yeah. So uh, back to the story here. Market Basket, fascinating thing that's sort of just kind of developing this conflict, developing in the public view with this internal family fight over this company. One guy getting uh, ousted as CEO, other longtime employees being fired. These longtime employees, I think the eight of them or however many of them there were, had a combined uh, hundred or no, 600 years of, uh, I guess it was more than eight of them, but lots of people were fired. 600 years worth of experience at the market basket chain was you know, blown out the door. And it is a real testament that these employees are really willing to put their jobs on the line in order to help foment executive level change in the company. It's it's very unique. As was pointed out previously, usually if employees are protesting, it's because they want more money or they you know they want some sort of other thing from the company. In this case, they just want to see things restored to the way they were. And it's kind of an interesting twist that they're actually outside on the clock because the managers agree. I mean, all you know, must be almost everyone in these stores that is on board. I'm sure there's somebody that takes the side of the the new double CEO team that they have there. But it sure doesn't. You know, you don't hear from those people. You're only hearing from the angry employees who are frustrated. They do, they want to go back to work, 
It's not that they want to be outside protesting all day. They want to go back to work, serve their customers, because they know that if this goes on for long enough, then, I mean, Market Basket is hemorrhaging cash right now because they're paying employees to be there, but the customers aren't coming in. And so that's an expensive situation that can only go on for so long. Right. They've got to make their point at some point soon. I mean, this can't go on forever, like you just said. They'll they'll run out of money soon. And I mean, I the only thing I've heard from anybody who opposes the situation is like some people will say, um, oh, they're just protesting to get Arthur back in because they're really afraid of facing the corporate decisions that they make. And that's probably true. They don't want to be paid minimum wage. The way that Market Basket is run, it's an employee first philosophy hmm. that Arthur takes where uh, you know, if you show that you really appreciate and respect your employees, they'll be more devoted and they'll be more. It's true. Uh, they'll they'll add more value with like they'll be more productive. I mean, when if anything working. has proved it, this has proved it. I mean, you treat your employees well, and they will uh, they'll go to bat for you. I mean, in this case, they really are. It's an amazing story. So Demolis, Arthur T. This is the guy who was ousted as CEO, who the the employees want back as CEO. He's gone. I I think above and beyond the call of duty here. He has said in a statement that he and his side of the family will try to buy the 50.5% of Market Basket now controlled by opposing relatives who supported his firing last month as president of the company. The statement that he released said, quote, We believe our offer is very is a very full and fair one and should meet or exceed a seller's expectations of the value of the company. Now, they're not revealing the amount that was offered for Market Basket in this offer, but he's saying... And I have no reason to disbelieve him based on what the employees are saying about this guy and being on the up and up. He's saying he's made a generous offer to uh, to make this buyout. Quote, we deeply care about Market Basket and all of our associates, and we want to work together to return the company to its successful model for serving our loyal customers. Those who receive the offer need to consider the matter, so we're not in a position to comment further at this time. I have an article from INC.com that says... Uh, Market Basket's actually received several offers. That's and, right. And uh, the highest bid so far was $3.3 billion. The value of Demoulis's offer was not disclosed, but the value of the entire company has been estimated at $3 billion to $3.5 billion by Kevin Griffin, publisher of the Griffin Report of Food Marketing. It was not immediately clear whether the offer was being seriously entertained. Now, this was from yesterday. I did an update today, and they are going to consider the offer, the uh, the current board uh, is going to consider the offer. And this, I think, is a smart, smart move by uh, Demolis here, Arthur T, because he knows everybody wants him back in, but the board, in order to in order to do what the employees want, the board would have to reverse their decision. They would have to take the two CEOs they brought on to replace the one CEO and do something with them. Either you don't just get rid of a CEO. You've right. got to give them some giant package. Sever severance package. Right. So either you demote them or transfer them to some other position, or you cut them and you give them a severance package and you have to apologize for making a mistake and wasting these poor people's time, these new CEOs. But if this guy comes in with a buyout, then that allows the board to sort of save a little bit of face at least. Definitely. They don't have to fire the two CEOs. This guy can come in, buy the company back. Everybody makes out, you know, apparently it's a generous offer, so the board can walk away at that point. He has full control and can bring the company back under his wing. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on Liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at Liberty.me. I love being a member of Liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. 
I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time can see expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control here toll free, 855-453-free. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. If you like the show, there are a lot of different ways you can support Free Talk Live. One way is to contribute Bitcoin. We've got the Bitcoin tip jar at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. Now, if you're new to Bitcoin, it's a decentralized currency. It is uh, an amazing thing. It's now about $600 is the current price for one Bitcoin. And it's become the world's most um, pop. I, I, would, I think it's fair to say Bitcoin's the world's most popular alternative currency at this point. Wouldn't you say? It's got the highest market cap of yeah. any of the cryptocurrencies. I don't mean just cryptocurrencies, but I would put it up there against gold and silver at this point, as far as people actually using it. People buy gold and silver and they hold on to it. That, at least that's how, what I've done with, with, you know, mostly silver, maybe a little bit of gold, but um, silver is easier to afford for me. But I don't know anybody who does any regular business whatsoever in silver. Every now and then, between the Liberty community, someone will do something with silver, like sell it for cash or maybe trade it for something. But it seems like, at least among the Liberty community in New Hampshire, Bitcoin has taken over as far as the transactional business out there. That Yeah, that seems to be a fairly accurate statement. So it would behoove you, if you do not yet have Bitcoin, to seriously consider acquiring some. 
And what you need in order to do that is a Bitcoin wallet. You have this is something you have to have. Uh, so you can get it in a variety variety of different ways, but the easiest one has to be blockchain. You go to blockchain.com and blockchain.info. Blockchain.com is easy one to find the software that you need for your smartphone, like Android, for instance. Uh, you can download their software. It makes it easy to access your Bitcoin wallet. Makes it easy to send and receive Bitcoin to anybody who also has a Bitcoin wallet. It's so handy. And so blockchain.info, go there, grab your uh, first or your second Bitcoin wallet for free. They've got over a million wallets that they've handed out there at blockchain.info, and it's free. So uh, coming up here, the news crew out of Albany who got in some uh, a pretty heated situation, uh, actually a ridiculous situation, with Department of Corrections employees who demanded that they turn over their footage so it could be deleted. Now, the footage was just stuff that was taken outside on a historic property that was nearby a, an old abandoned jail. I guess it wasn't completely abandoned because there were a bunch of bureaucrats around who decided to crack down. We'll play that audio from you here in a moment. We're going to go first to Skype, though, where Andy is on the lines. Uh, hello, Andy. Are you with us? Yeah, I called to take over the airwaves. You've you done guys. that. <laughs> Welcome. Um, no, actually, I wanted to find out about the uh, Free State Initiative. The, I, you know, I heard a lot about it, and I heard somebody actually mentioned that you wanted to succeed from the union eventually is, is that the ultimate goal of it well not the free state project is what you're talking about the free state project is a, a concept of bringing liberty-minded people all to the same geographic area and new hampshire was chosen as the destination state out of 10 possible candidate destination states about a decade ago actually just over a decade ago new hampshire was chosen so people have been moving ever since we want to get to 20,000 people that'll move up here and get active now, getting active can mean different things, and some people within the Free State Project are not fans of the idea of secession, but others are. I am one of them. Daryl, you, I know, are another secession fan. Ellen, I don't know where you stand on secession. I have no comment. Oh, okay. I don't know if that means you have no opinion, or if you do have an opinion and you just don't want to comment on it. I don't think that it would be a wise move, mm -hmm. but I think ideally it would be a good idea, but... Okay. The way things are right now, I don't think it would work out so well. Yeah, it's true that people are going to need to come around to this idea. But no, so the answer is, uh, Andy, the Free State Project is not an explicitly secessionist movement, but there are people who are Free State Project participants, like Daryl and myself, who support the idea of secession. And last year at Keenvention, I hosted the secession panel. And you may be hosting again. I haven't yet found anybody else to, uh, to step up for that. And I kind of like the idea of changing people out on the host role yeah. if possible, but not always. In fact, Stephanie Murphy is going to re uh, return to her role as the Bitcoin panel uh, host this year as well. So we'll see, how, we'll see how that pans out. But what do you think about that, Andy? Go ahead. Um, yeah, well, I was thinking if you really want to succeed from the union, why not just take over another country like St. Kitts, who has maybe like 40,000 uh, people living there and you know, they have in their constitution a way of becoming a citizen there. And if 20,000 people moved over there, I mean, you'd have more than half the population and, and can do whatever you want, pretty much, I guess, because they don't even have an income tax. I was, I was doing some, in, you know, research on that. And uh, I think it would be a easier way to, you know, get your point across and get some success if you did something like that. Well, it's a lot harder to convince people from the U.S. to move to a foreign country in hopes of trying to take over the foreign country than it is to convince them to move somewhere within the United States. Well, I because disagree. It, because, it's a lot know, easier to move within the United States than well, it is to move to a foreign country. Well, you might say easier, but, you know, the, the weather's nicer down there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, it is possible to move there and become a citizen. They're very open if you have the money to... Uh, that's the key, isn't it? Because yeah. I know that uh, we had had passports for Bitcoin that we were talking about here on Free Talk Live, mm -hmm. and in order, and that was the Saint Kitts program that you're talking about. Right. And in order to do that, you basically would have to spend several hundred, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars. Um, yeah. So right there, that's the reason why the plan that you're talking about won't work, um, because it's hard enough to get people to move to one state inside the United States, which is a relatively low-cost uh, thing to do. I mean, you know, moving's not cheap, but on the right. scale of things you can pay money for, it's relatively cheap. 
um, a lot cheaper than spending two hundred thousand dollars on you know or four hundred thousand dollars on a passport slash citizenship from St. Kitts. And then, of course, once you get in there, you're still the interloper. I mean, even though you've got your citizenship, even if you did pay the three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars and you get your so-called citizenship, you're still the gringo. You're still the interloper who's coming in there trying to change things. And that's that's a tough enough role to be in even within the United States, because Free State Project participants are still labeled that way here in New Hampshire. But at the very least here, you can still argue that it's still within the U.S., you know, freedom, liberty, the granite state of mind here in New Hampshire is uh, live free or die. So this is also a sort of a freedom-oriented place, and it's a good place to start something like the Free State Project. I don't know how freedom-oriented St. Kitts is. Um, and again, you'd be building something from scratch that would only be marketable towards multimillionaires. And I don't think that's... You're not going to find 20 multimillionaires willing to move to St. Kitts, I don't think, let alone, uh, you know, let alone... 200 or 20,000 of them. And if you're going to try taking over an island, then the Pitcairn Islands would make the most sense. Why? Because only 48 people live there. Okay. There must be a reason for that, though. It must not be very desirable to live there. Or maybe they're not very large. Well, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the islands aren't very large. It's a British territory. So you would have to, you know, like bow down to the queen and stuff. Mm. And I'm not a kneeler. So, I don't know. There, those are my initial responses. Ellen, what do you think about moving out to St. Kitts? Um, I think that if you can afford it, then go ahead. But I, I don't know. Like, wherever... The, if if the Free State Project was located somewhere else, like on, on these islands, let's say, that was the target area, they would still face just as much opposition. I mean, there'd be, there would still be people there that were angry that there was people that coming in and basically intruding on what they think is theirs and trying to change things from what they know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would still be just as difficult. But besides that, you'd also have to face, you know, I don't really know what country there controls the islands, but I'm sure that there would be, you know, some sort of flashback from St. Kitts is its own country, isn't it? I think so. I'm looking on the CIA World Factbook getting info, right. so... Uh, I will pull up St. Kitts real quick and uh, let you know. It's actually St. Kitts and Nevis, so it's two islands that make up the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And let me scroll down here to government. And The CIA World Factbook the, is actually pretty useful. The Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, it does not appear to be a territory of anywhere. So that's their own country. Then. So it's uh, its own country. It might be within the Commonwealth of the Realm of the United Kingdom because they did get independence mm. from so uh, where, Great Britain. Where on the globe is this located? Is this like the... It's Atlantic? in the Caribbean. The Caribbean, Okay. Uh, so I guess it wouldn't be too far away from you know any civilization, but still, it, it's kind of difficult to say that uh, you know you'll have a successful society on your own if there's no way that you can get a hold of certain like natural resources. Well, they probably have some kind of natural resource there. Andy, any other thoughts you want to share about it? Uh, well, no, I think you covered it, but I just want to say you know I really don't think that succeeding from the, from the nation would be a good idea because. If, if you're actually successful with New Hampshire and can prove to the rest of the country that, you know, it well, works. Hang, hang on. If you don't mind, I want to bring you back because I like to talk about the idea of secession and whether or not it's a good idea. So we'll bring it okay. back, Andy. It's Free Talk Live. Hour two's next. You can take control. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. 
This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 25th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,299. Silver open at $20.86. And Bitcoin is trading around $598.18. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code Liberty and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com or call them up 512-459-5253. In the news, Texans for Accountable Government will be having their next meeting July 28th at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub at 7 p.m. On the agenda is Heather Fazio from Marijuana Policy Project, Rachel Canney on winning elections, and Dr. Norman Horn will discuss the upcoming Christians for Liberty event with special guest Dr. Laura Presley, city council candidate for District 4. The Liberty Beat's own Justin Armand will be emceeing the event July 28, 7 p.m. at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub. Texans for Accountable Government is a political action committee dedicated to creating a more free and prosperous Texas. More info at tagtexas.org. Christianity and Liberty come together in a first-of-its-kind conference planned for Saturday, August 2nd, on the campus of Austin's St. Edwards University. Norman Horn is the founder and chief editor of LibertarianChristians.com. Well, it has been the desire of a lot of my readers for some time to have the opportunity to come together and meet a lot of Christian libertarians all in one place. But it's no surprise that people wanted to see this happen, especially as we've been growing our presence in various corners of the web, like at our Christian Libertarian Facebook group. The all-day conference kicks off at 9 o'clock on the morning of August 2nd and will conclude with an evening social at 8.30. This is an opportunity to hear a number of Christian libertarian speakers talk about our views of faith and politics working in tandem. We have a number of great opportunities to fellowship together, to meet new people, and to discuss our views and encourage each other and equip each other to be better advocates for liberty from a Christian point of view. Peripheral events are also planned, with all liberty-minded individuals, not just Christians, invited to attend. Registration details and a full conference schedule can be found at libertarianchristians.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at corymoreshow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, July 25th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. House Investigators Tuesday announced that the computer hard drive of ex-IRS official Lois Lerner was only scratched and not irreparably damaged. That report from Fox News. Investigators learned that Lerner's hard drive was recoverable after talking to IRS information technology experts, according to the committee. Members of Congress say the new information raises questions about potential criminal wrongdoing because the agency previously claimed the hard drive was recycled and potentially shredded. Investigators are still trying to determine whether the hard drive was scratched accidentally or deliberately. An entire Chinese town of 30,000 residents has been quarantined off from the rest of the country after a man in a nearby village died from bubonic plague. Officials are managing 10 checkpoints around the city of Yumen, preventing travel for more than a week now, as reported by the London Independent. 
At least 150 people who came into contact with the victim have been placed under direct observation. On Thursday, The Intercept released a 2013 document from the National Counter... Counter... On Thursday, The Intercept released a 2013 document from the National Counterterrorism Center, which details the rules for placing individuals on terrorism watch lists, including the no-fly list. The 166-page document details what the government defines as terrorism, which includes everything from assassination and hostage-taking to destruction of government property or computers, and any act that is dangerous to property or intended to influence government through intimidation. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 1370 AM, Sundays at 4. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, July 25th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. And in a surprise announcement this morning, U.S. Deputy Surgeon General Greg Paulson stated that, quote, it's fine to smoke cigarettes if you only smoke while drinking. The Deputy Surgeon General has called the press conference to discuss the shocking findings, which began just moments ago. Let's go live to that now. Was there a particular study this report was based on? Look, that, that determination was made after considering that someone who only smokes when at bars or parties ends up smoking maybe 15 cigarettes a month. What? While regular smokers are smoking 150 to 200 cigarettes each week. So we feel that it's just obvious that as long as you don't actually buy the cigarettes and you only smoke them while consuming the alcohol, then the risks of getting lung cancer are basically mostly negligible. Just common sense. Well, this announcement comes on the heels of the Surgeon General's last announcement that drinking and driving is fine if you ate a lot that day or if it's a route you take all the time sober. Moving on, the Japanese Space Agency has announced plans to put a schoolgirl on the moon by 2015. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. Plenty of time for your call about whatever's on your mind. You may use our phone lines. They're toll-free and brought to you by ProXPN. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, it's Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. And, of course, you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, and that's where Andy is. In fact, Andy, I didn't ask you... Uh, where you were calling from. Where are you, by the way? I'm in Long Island, New York. Long Island. Uh, welcome to Free Talk Live. We've been discussing with you, Andy, uh, the Free State Project and secession, which is different right. from succession. Uh, but secession is the idea of uh, the you know a political body of some sort removing itself from another political body of, body of which it was a part. So, for instance, New Hampshire could secede from the United States. South Sudan could secede from Sudan. You know. They already did. Right. I'm just giving some examples of... Uh, and In fact, I think, is it Ireland that's looking to secede from the UK? Ireland... Well, Ireland isn't Northern part Ireland. of the UK. It's not. Okay. Northern Ireland is. Ah, okay. There's a referendum in Scotland. Scotland. In September of this year, and Barack Obama has come out in opposition to Scottish independence. Interesting saying that somehow the United States needs a united Britain <laughs> in order for hmm. Britain to be a good ally. As if, you know, Scotland couldn't also be a good ally. That's interesting because normally the U.S. government supports secession movements worldwide. But only where the country is run by a dictator. Yeah, only when it's not one of their buddies, I guess, apparently. Well, the U.S. isn't supportive of the moves in Iraq to split that country apart. There's yeah. a very strong secessionist movement in the northern portion of Iraq and Kurdistan. Good point. So as long as the U.S. has no, the U.S. government has no interests uh, in that country. As and long as the U.S. Okay. benefits from the new country yeah. being formed, mm -hmm. the U.S. government supports the secession. So, Andy, you were saying you didn't think secession was a good idea, and you barely had time to really explain why. Could you do that for me? Yeah, well, I just wanted to make the point that, you know, if you guys are successful and, you know, you change the state for the better and you, you know, make an example of it, I think people will look positive at that, you know, positively at that and say, wow, how do we make our state like that? And, and you know, you can be a, a model. 
but if if you decide to you know just kind of be your own thing and and you not want to include everybody else it it kind of gives it a negative uh tone where people would look at it and say oh you know they're not interested in helping the country as a whole but well, they just want to sure help they themselves would... I'm sure that if New Hampshire seceded, they would want to include other people as in like in terms of uh, free market trade and things like that. It just would be run by a different government. My right. hopes for secession is that once one domino falls, I want the rest of the country to secede as well. And then I want Barack Obama or whoever is the president to wind up being in the White House you know, presiding over like the 40 square miles or whatever it is <laughs> that is in Washington, D.C. I don't want there to be a United States government. Yeah, I, I hope that the six Californias initiative that goes on the ballot in California in 2016, I hope it passes. I hope Texas winds up splitting into a bunch of different states. I would love to see every state in, you know, the western part of the U.S. declare independence and then counties within the states declare independence. I, I have long said that I support the seven billion state solution. Mm. Yeah, I just I question the success of it, though, because this is what the Civil War was fought over. The South was not allowed to succeed or secede at all. Well, the like, funny thing about the Civil War is that when the New England states threatened to secede in the 1830s, nobody said, you can't do that. But when the southern states seceded, Abe Lincoln wanted to keep the Union together, and he somehow saw the splitting apart of the country as violative of the U.S. Constitution. Well, it was really a threat to his power. It right? was. It was a respect my authority. That's why he arrested a large portion of the Maryland legislature, enough to where they still had a quorum so that they could meet, but not enough to where they could actually vote on secession. He arrested the secessionist mm. legislators. So, Andy, my response to what you were saying there about the concerns that some people will have, like if New Hampshire goes ahead and secedes, and maybe we won't be the first, maybe Vermont will go first, I don't know. But if whatever state goes ahead and secedes, your concern was that some people will look at that and they'll say, oh, well, they're just leaving us here because they're all out in it for themselves. I'm not really worried about impressing those people. I mean, there are going to be people out there who want to stick with the crown, right? Like if you, lo you go back to the United States seceding from Great Britain, there were, what was it, 30% of the people who supported it, 30% of the people who opposed it, and 30% who just didn't care, you know, some sort of breakdown. Uh, I've heard that, like that. St statistic, and I've also heard that it was a smaller percentage that was actually supportive of secession. I heard that it was a smaller percentage who was actually supportive, uh, like, f by doing something, you know, like by sh shielding the soldiers or, you know, hiding right. people out, that kind of thing, willing to put take some sort of risk, probably only 10% there. Uh, but there were others who, like, quietly would have would have supported it. But there's always going to be the, you know, the kind of the adherence to the crown, the people who like the status quo, the people right. who, you know, don't appreciate the idea of secession. But I don't really worry myself about about those people. Right. I and only want to promote this idea in as understandable a way as possible, show the benefits of it, and hopefully convince people. And, you know, as much as I like Gigi Bowman down in Long Island, mm -hmm. she wants to, you know, like somehow save Long Island. We we have to stay in Long Island. Can't go to New Hampshire because Long Island needs my help. <laughs> and while, you know, I certainly I respect where she's coming from, I just don't see it as very viable. Yeah. Why? Well, now, why is that funny? You laughed, Andy. Is that why is that funny? As someone who well, lives in Long no, Island, well, because there's always been a you know a, a movement of trying to get Long Island to be the 51st state, and that hasn't really gone far. But it's it's always been on the back burner of people's minds, right? Because so we're in the shadow of New York. Let, let me state. play devil's advocate here for a second, Andy, and say that if Long Island seceded from New York State to create its own state. Wouldn't they be sending a message to the rest of New York that we're not in it for all of you? We are in it for ourselves? Well, we'd still be part of the United States, though. We'd still have a star on the flag and you'd be part of, you know, the, the union. So Right, but uh, it's the same scenario, only on a smaller scale. Right. Why, why is the mythology of the United States so important to you? 
Um, what does it matter whether or not I'm in a you know I'm in a place where there's some sort of political union with other people who are a thousand miles away from me and have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with me on a daily basis? Why why does that even matter? Well, it's just you know power on the world stage, maybe. I mean, you know, it, I don't it, seek it, that though. I, I'm not interested in power over others uh, on the world stage or anywhere for that matter. Well, aren't you afraid if if you know you have a little tiny country that anybody could no. force? Take it over? No, not at all. I mean, there's plenty of tiny countries out there, and they're doing just fine. I mean, you look at Andorra, for instance. Uh, you know, that's that's one example. There are many tiny little countries out there. And besides that, New Hampshire is very well armed. There are a lot of people here who have uh, guns. I don't know if it's that way in Long Island, but uh, here in New Hampshire, I don't think you're allowed to own a gun in Long Island. I don't think so either. No, I know my it's... brother has one. So. <laughs> oh, you are... plenty of them actually. He goes shooting all the time. You but... are allowed to own guns in Long Island. Uh -huh. That's good to know. It's, just, it's so close to New York City. I just figured it was the same kind of uh, gun restrictions there. Uh, so... No, well, you know, but no, it's America, and I believe in the Constitution. And Why? Free, Why do you, you know, believe in the Constitution? Did you but, sign no. it? Did I sign it? No, but uh, would you? Would I? The way it is. Well, I don't like the part where they, uh, you know, had prohibition and then took it away again. Yeah. The there's also thing. that whole part where uh, black people are three fifths of a man. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool. You know, if I could just write it over again from scratch, uh, I'd definitely make it. A lot Wouldn't of you agree, though, that as Lysander Spooner put it, that the Constitution either has authorized the tyranny that we have today or has been powerless to prevent it? Isn't that something to do with the necessary and proper clause? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, there's. A clause that states that any you you can pass a law that is necessary or proper. Hmm. It's it's completely subjective. Well, there's always that's, loopholes, right? That's that's the area where uh, subjectivity is able to come in, and people can just make things like the National Defense Authorization Act. Like this is necessary. And but proper I don't for think safety. if you rewrote it, Ellen, that it would you'd solve that problem. Like even if you change that clause, that all of a sudden government wouldn't be able to grow or wouldn't find excuses or reasons to just simply ignore their own rules. Andy, good call, man. Thanks for bringing the subject up. I think we need to talk more about secession. It's Free Talk Live. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. Go. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. 
So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. So enjoy the features waiting for you there. In fact, I was talking earlier about Bitcoin wallets. You can go get one from blockchain.info for free. But then you've got to have Bitcoins to load up into the wallet. So how do you get those? Well, you can go to expresscoin.com. Expresscoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoins. Now Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. So they've got uh, some new altcoins available there as well. You can get them with money order, check, or wire transfer. Or you can even uh, deposit cash at credit unions with shared branching. Go to expresscoin.com to get started. They pride themselves on their customer service. They want to take care of your needs. So go to expresscoin.com and get rolling with uh, with your Bitcoins or alternatives over at expresscoin.com. They've got a smartphone app, and they're now available in Canada as well. Let's jump right back into your calls and thoughts, whether it's secession, the market basket, uh, grocer conflict, or whatever's on your mind tonight. Bobby is in Lakeville, Florida. You're on Free Talk Live. How you guys doing tonight? Bobby, good. Go ahead with your thoughts. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, well, I got uh, re-Baker Acted again. I told you guys last time uh, I got Baker Acted. The Baker and, Act um, is uh, a Florida law that allows people to be taken against their will and put into a mental uh, ward, basically, for a 72-hour period but even after that, they can keep you there on the say-so of uh, essentially some sort of shrink and uh, nod from a judge. So you were Baker Acted again. Go ahead. Yes, I was Baker Acted again. Um, uh, this time, um, how it happened, I was um, uh, simply I was walking down I was walking down the road again, and um, I got just I was walking home from a bar, and uh, a cop he came over and uh, started harassing me. Uh, it's only about a mile walk, and um, uh, he came up and and uh, he he seems walking on the road, and he puts his lights on behind me, and like he's pulling me over. I'm not even driving. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, uh, he uh, he has his head out the window and says, "Hey man, I need to talk to you for a minute. Uh, I need you to stop." And so uh, I stopped, and. Uh, I started start talking to him, and I, and I got a couple of beers in me and stuff. And I said, sir, and I, and I was trying to use the techniques you guys told me before, because this is a very common occurrence now uh, around here. And I think this cop uh, knows my parents uh, uh, anyways. And last time uh, I got uh, we're all kind of from the same area, and it's a small town, you know. And okay. so these things get so around. So what's he asking bad. you about? What are some of the things he's, you know, he's getting? Out, he got out of his car, he came over and talked to you. What happened? He said, uh, well, look like you're stumbling while you're walking down the road. He wanted to make sure I was okay. And I said, I'm fine. And uh, he went on um, asking if, I, if he could call an ambulance for me because he didn't think I was fine. And, and uh, he was asking me if I could submit to a blood test, you know, just to prove to him that I'm not fine. Whoa. Without a with him. 
yeah, submit to a blood test for him um, uh, because he doesn't think I'm fine. And that uh, I'm well, where where would you have to go happy. for that blood test? Would he take you into a uh, hospital? No, he, 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 I don't. Well, I don't know exactly what he take who he took me into, but I think they have their own collectors at the. Uh, they got these little hubs at the sheriffs, and they have these little hubs around, like uh, uh, like they they just took over my my local little town's police, okay. um, uh, and like. They only have two or three police officers there, but then they, they take over their, like, uh, the, the little city's police and they use that as, like, a hub. So, Bobby, what happened? And, I mean, you uh, you told him you didn't want to take the blood test. Then what? Right. I told him I didn't want to take the blood test, and he told me that uh, he felt that I was dangerous myself. And I said, sure, I'm not dangerous myself. I mean, can I go? Am I free to leave? He said, no, you're not free to leave. And... Uh, he says you're talking irrationally, and you know I was maybe slurring my words a little bit and stuff. And uh, he asked me if I've ever been face reacted before, and uh, that's why you know it's a tight knit community around here. And like the cops that, that the sheriffs, they, they they stay in like three certain areas and stuff. And now, I didn't I know that them, uh, you're, uh, you're kind of getting off on a tangent there. I want to make sure we focus on what happened to you. So um, I didn't know that Baker acting could happen for being drunk. Well, no, but it can be if, if an officer thinks you're going to be a harm to yourself. Uh huh. So if you're so drunk that you could be a harm to yourself, they can then take you and put you in a medical uh, hold for 72 hours in a crazy house. Or even if you are mildly drunk and they think you might be a danger to yourself. That's what I was saying. Right. If you're drunk. Exactly. Well, you said if you're so drunk. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's up to the cop, right? So the cop determines how drunk like, you even are. Even if you're completely sober, if they, they think it. that yeah. you are a danger to yourself. I used to work as a security guard in Pennsylvania at a hospital, and Pennsylvania has something they call 302, mm-hmm. which same is— thing. Sa- same thing, just a different name, where yep. it's involuntary uh, commitment. commitment to a mental institution— To where if you say something that somebody thinks could be interpreted in a way that you are a danger to yourself or someone else. So, you know, for instance, I've got this horrible headache uh, that I've had for almost three years. If I woke up and said, I don't really feel like being alive today. Mm, I'm going to kill myself. It hurts so much. No, if I just said, and I've actually witnessed people get put into the mental institution for saying, I don't feel like being alive That's today. Crazy. So, Bobby, what else did you want to highlight from your experience? So, I want to highlight from the experience I was in there, and then uh, uh, they go through all your past different records and stuff while I've been in there before, and last time I was in there, was total crap, you know, and, um, like, it seems like they're definitely more abusive to, toward me this time. Um, while I was in there, uh, I mean, and it's just so, he took me in this cop car and took me down, took me to an escort down to the hospital. And then uh, while I was in the hospital, um, uh, once you do get big cracks, if you refuse, if you refuse any care that they give you, they can mark that down on you and keep you longer. And, you know. How long did they keep uh, you on this was, run? This one, this one, was, this, this one was about five days. Jesus. So the past. So the past um, three weeks, I've been in there probably like a total of, I don't know, 15 days. How is it that they're able to keep you beyond the three days? Is it they, you know, they have the assessor come and talk to you, and then they, they you know, they determine, ah, oh, he's still a danger to himself, even though he's completely sober? Well, what they do is that uh, you have your habeas corpus, and after 72 hours, the doctor, what they'll do, they'll have you sign your your voluntary papers and uh so you've actually been your voluntary but you're not really voluntary any more than you're involuntarily because you sign these voluntary papers if you don't sign the voluntary papers they take you to court and i got to see what happens when they take people to court so they gave you papers that would have kept you in is that the what the papers do they gave me an ultimatum that they're going to either take me to court or I could sign these voluntary papers and let the doctor keep doing what he, you know, thought because he thought it would be a couple more days. But if, if I didn't sign voluntary, he was going to take me to court the next day. And he he kind of like let it off, let me know that he was going to keep me even longer than a couple more days if I didn't do voluntary like he said. And if you sign these voluntary papers, that does what exactly? 
You sign the voluntary papers, that means they can keep you longer than that 72 hours. And you're, you're else you go in front of a judge, which is what you ended up doing. You didn't sign the papers. You went in front of the judge. Hang on, Bobby. We'll let you tell the rest of the story here in a moment. Toll-free number for you, 855-450-FREE. Have you been involuntarily committed? Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. I just heard the best sales pitch I've heard in a long time on an airplane. The flight attendant announced, if you paid more than $75 for your round trip ticket, you overpaid. This is brilliant because everybody on the flight paid more. And I was struck by how all the road warriors stopped typing and reading and working and looked up. The announcement invited us to apply for the airline's credit card. And the sign-up bonus? Enough frequent flyer miles for a free round trip. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With some banks offering free credit cards, $75 is an outrage for an annual fee, but a bargain for airline tickets. For more tips on communicating more effectively, hit survivalspeech.com, where you can see how I got the CEO of another major airline to shower me with freebies. I'm Holland Cook. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. When there are cameras around, it doesn't make a difference. There were people with video cameras all over this event yesterday. That's and good. it looked like um, uh, these people were trying to get away, Yes, honestly. they were. Yes, they were. They were, were being these shot. People rushing towards the uh, cop phalanx. Nope. That's right. They were trying to get away. And those batons weren't rubber like the bullets were. They were either trying to get away or they were p- members of the news media trying to cover the event. Right. Police are supposed to be there to protect and serve. To be Allegedly. Peace- Allegedly to be peace officers. And instead, they're creating war. And, of course, the uh, chief of police is claiming he'll investigate. What they're going to investigate, I don't know. It's going to be very difficult to identify the officers in this video footage because there were so many of them. Mm -hmm. There was an army of police officers out there, and every single one of them was participating in the attack on unarmed, innocent people. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm, and you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Speaking of being online, 
you really should take some steps to protect your privacy. One of them that you can take is to hook up with ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that before it leaves your computer, it's encrypted. Therefore, your ISP, your internet service provider, cannot snoop on you anymore. And they're probably snooping right now, logging every website you visit, logging every search term you enter, keeping those logs, in some cases, as long as five years. So you can stop that from happening by installing ProXPN. Their software is free. You can download it at window, or for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but you can get it working as well. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go there, get started. Now, as I said, the, there is a free account, but it's limited in what you can do. The bandwidth is limited first and foremost. So to, to uh, go to an unlimited bandwidth account, the premium account, where you can connect to servers around the world and you can privately torrent, you'll need our discount code. It's FTL20. That saves you 20% off the price of the premium account. And if you order the annual plan, that breaks the price down to $5 per month. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL and get started there. And again, use code FTL20. Don't forget, there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep online uh, records of your online habits at all. So proxpn.com slash FTL. Bobby is in Lakeville, Florida. He's talking about what in Florida is called the Baker Act. Uh, Daryl, you said in Philly or in Pennsylvania it's called uh, 301? Uh, 302. 302. Section 302 of some Criminal statute, or something. something. And then if they, if you voluntarily commit yourself, that's a 201. So in this case, it's involuntary, uh, involuntary commitment. It's called something different in, I think, almost every state. But they all pretty much have these things. And what you were just telling us, Bobby, is that after you were committed, on the third day they come and they give you papers that they say are voluntary – that if you sign them, you are essentially continuing to commit yourself in the mental ward. Else, you can then go to Correct. a judge. Is that right? That's right. Doesn't sound very voluntary to right. me, but what happens with the judge option? You said you found that out. Right. So what happens with the judge option, I went and did, I, uh, I exercised my habeas corpus, they call it, and um, they had the judge, um, a judge comes in with his bailiff, and the bailiff is fully armed with a taser and a gun. Wait, wait, wait. The, the judge comes not... into the mental hospital? Yes. That's interesting. Okay. It's uh, part of their health board. It's a judge. He comes into the mental hospital there, and uh, they set up in the uh, community room. And um, uh, everybody has their little public defender, so before the judge is there, the public defender is making her little rounds, going around like an hour before the judge gets there, um, asking us, you know, uh, why why do we think we should be able to leave and this and that. And, you know, uh, she's basically like a package for them. Okay. So I talked to her, and uh, she explained to me that uh, the doctor uh, was going to say his piece, uh, and then I would get to say my piece. And uh, what they have to do, in Florida at least, there has to be two medical doctors, the one that you see, and then there has to be another doctor, psychiatrist doctor, and he has to sign off on it too. So there's got to be two doctors, and then the judge signs off on and it. And what are they signing well, off on, the idea of committing you further or letting you out? Well, either or. Okay. So... I'm in there, and um, uh, there's, there's 13 of us that have to go and see the judge that day. And um, I, I, I'm waiting my turn, waiting my turn. And as people come out, you know, I'm seeing them crying. Like, this one lady comes out, she's devastated because she thought she was going to get to go home. She didn't get to go home. Mm. And uh, a guy came out, and he, he got mad, and he came out and started yelling and screaming. Was that only going to add to his day? Um <laughs> And uh, it just, people were inflamed. And uh, I, I was watching the doctor and the other doctor, and it looked like, you know, they were pretty much pals. You know, like, this is his golfing buddy or something mm -hmm. that he has in here. And uh, so they're sitting there laughing, talking, making jokes. This is cool. I like to see people happy. But I don't know. This seemed a little too cozy for my comfort, man. Mm. So uh, I finally I get, I get up there. I get my turn. And uh, the public defender. Uh, she she steps up and she says, uh, "Tell me to come on up there." And uh, the medical doctor uh, 
who told them that I wouldn't take any of the medications that I was being prescribed by them and that uh, I refused to eat the food while I was there and that if uh, if I didn't start complying that uh, uh, you know they needed to keep me longer because they needed to make sure that I wasn't going to harm myself by not taking medication that they just put me on because they think I need to be on this medication. And uh, the both the doctors, uh, eventually, you know, both doctors, I didn't win at all. Uh, both the doctors, they signed off on it. The judge then stamped it. And uh, I was in there for, you know, another four, four days or so. You wow. know, it's so sad to see that, you know, anybody that expresses too much emotion or not enough emotion can be looked at as crazy or like if you don't want to put this case, a substance he was just drinking I or mean, he put was a substance dry. in your body that doctors are telling you to take but you don't know what it is right. and it might have negative effects on you what do you making need that choice for yourself that's looked down upon what are the what's the medication supposedly for? You were drunk that night. I mean, is the medication going to make you not a drunk from that point on? I mean, Most medications say don't mix with alcohol. So giving somebody that's intoxicated well, medication. He wasn't on alcohol the three days he was in there. But regardless, no, Bobby. So they signed off. How did you end up getting out after the other four days? I took all the medication that they wanted me to while I was there. Uh, I agree to do their outpatient, um, but you know, there's no legal binding once you get out. But um, I started taking the medication there. It really threw me off. It gave me back pain. Mm. It was giving me nightmares. Um, I mean, it was just really sick because, you know, then they stick me on uh, this stuff called trazodone, and it's supposed to be a sleeping medication, but um, it, it can contort your body and stuff. And it gave me um, it gave me this really bad uh, uh, erection that would stay longer <laughs> like, than an hour. I mean, it was wow. just a terrible feeling. So if you don't take sleep. their medication, could, in theory, you be held for the rest of your life? Oh, in theory, yes. They kept going back to your court, and they could send you to the state mental hospital, too, if they do. Right. You, uh, and this guy's got opp out. oppositional defiance disorder. He won't do what we say. He must be crazy. Thanks, Bobby, for your story. I appreciate the detail and the heads up for people. They need to know that this exists, and it's not uncommon. Bobby happened to have called the show twice about the same same thing over the last couple weeks. Um, but he's not the only one they're doing this to. And the fact that you could be walking home from a bar and taken into a mental facility for safekeeping is to me so crazy and so wrong because there's this big push against people driving drunk, right? Right. Uh, the idea is driving drunk is bad. And He's I think lucky they didn't also charge him with drunk in public. Maybe. It, does that exist everywhere? I'm not sure if, if it, it exists does. in most places. Here in Keene, uh, in New Hampshire, you get what's called protective custody, which is in, not actually a charge. It's just something that they hit you with for an overnight. So in Keene, if you're too drunk to be on the streets, a possible danger to yourself, you know, like staggering into traffic or something like that. That's the, the reason why they supposedly take people. They then lock them in a cage at the jail for the night and then they let them out the next day. So I don't I don't think that's the same thing. It's not I don't know if it's the same statute as involuntary involuntary commitment, whatever that is in New Hampshire. But, uh, you know, they can just snatch you up off the streets. Isn't it more responsible to walk home drunk? Like if you're going to go drink at a bar to either take a cab, if you can get a cab to take you home or to simply walk home. I mean, if you're stumbling a little bit, that's not a threat to yourself. That's not a threat to traffic or anything like that. I just. But it could potentially be, which is what they're trying to avoid. I don't, it just seems so arbitrary to well, me. Well, I could be driving down the street, get stung in the ear by a bee, and then I'm potentially a hazard to everybody on the road. Yeah, if you take your hands off the wheel. Trying to swat the have to bee. take you in for the bee sting. We'll come back with more here. 855 450 Arrest the bee. free. Just take the pills, Daryl, and you'll get out. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live and you can share your experience. Still to come here tonight, the latest on Uber. They're under attack. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. LLC. 
If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM1 from Terraganix. Life's getting better. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control here. It's all free. The number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We actually are talking about involuntary commitment. Uh, I had a guy call in a moment ago who was sharing his personal experience. And as always, it's a frightening story wherein you're just going about your life, trying to enjoy yourself. In this case, he had had a couple beers, maybe more than a couple. And he was doing the, in my opinion, responsible thing. Because not everybody can afford to buy a taxi to take them home. Nor would it necessarily be necessary if, like, for instance, here in Keene, New Hampshire, if I want to go downtown to a bar and drink, I can walk five minutes, ten maximum, and I'm at the bar at which I'd like to drink. So why would I want to hire a taxi uh, to take me anywhere if I'm in a small place like that? 
So it just doesn't make sense. It wouldn't even cross my mind. Oh, I'm too drunk to walk? I mean, if I'm too drunk to walk, I guess I would call a taxi. But if I can walk out of the bar and walk down the street, then I'm I should be good to go. If you're too drunk to walk, you're probably too drunk to call somebody as well. And no, hopefully the, there's someone the there that will help them. you. Yeah, the bar will call someone. Hopefully. I just think that it, it was such a, a sad story, really, to know that there's such a not even a line anymore between sane and insane and what you can be put into a facility for. Right. Well, you can be committed, apparently, for not liking authority, right? That's called oppositional defiance disorder. Yes. You're, Odd. Yeah, ODD. And uh, in this, in his case, he was committed for being drunk on the streets. They then kept him uh, because he would not sign some sort of voluntary continued commitment form. He would not take the pills that they were demanding that he take, so they continued to keep him until he took, obediently took the pills that they demanded he takes, which is, to me, really scary. Uh, my board operator says, I'd rather go to jail than ever take terazidone again. Now, I've never heard of terazidone. I think the caller had mentioned it earlier uh, during his explanation. Yeah, I think of- he said that was the one that gave his body contortions. Okay, I had, yeah. I, I remember him saying about contortions. I, I didn't recall the name of the drug that he had mentioned. Because, you know, a lot of the drugs, they've got these weird names that, you know, people say them and it, it's so many syllables that it's hard to yeah, remember what it? what it is. Sure. And the names of some of these weird disorders that they have, it's almost like they create a acronym and then try to figure out a disorder. Like there's yeah. the SAD, the Seasonal Effective, Effective disorder. disorder. So, you know, when it's all dark and gloomy in the wintertime because you're not getting enough vitamin D, mm-hmm. then, you know, some people react worse than others right. and they go into, you know, like a seasonal depression. Never That's what I was me. thinking you're sad. When, you were, when you said odd. Like now yeah. odd is mm-hmm. going to be more of an insult because if you call somebody, oh, that person's odd, they're... They yes. have oppositional defiance disorder. Yeah. And like immediately people that are slightly odd are going to be, you know, considered the mental ones. State mental facilities have been notoriously abusive, frightening, awful places uh, for people to be. And the idea that you could not escape unless you did what they wanted to, you to do, which is to put whatever chemicals they demand in your body. Man, that's frightening stuff. Not yeah. to mention, most of these drugs they prescribe are also addictive. Like, well, they're not only addictive, they have very dangerous side effects. A lot of the medications, if you've ever seen or heard the advertisements for a lot of these depression medications. Yeah, two weeks later, you'll see a commercial that's like, if you took this pill, you can call the law office and get <laughs> compensation. Yeah. Did you suffer from... And then they list like so many disorders well, that you can get from it. Homicidal and it's suicidal better to not tendencies. Even take it. Homicidal and suicidal tendencies, which is why you take antidepressants, and then are, they cause that. Like th- those are the two most common side effects of mm. the antidepressants. And I watched a documentary where there was, you know, they talked to a bunch of different families that had been affected by people in their family committing suicide. Because they were taking these medications, yep. the one family said that their daughter, who was about to be the valedictorian of her high school, she started taking antidepressants because the doctor prescribed them because she was stressed out about the finals. Oh, my God. Like, final exams are coming up. Daughter's a little stressed. So take a pill. That'll take solve these it. pills. Don't reason through your emotions. Just she, take the easy way out. She tells her mom, I don't feel right. Something's oh, not God. right. A couple hours later, she's found dead. Suicide. Killed herself. Yeah, Had never that. been depressed before. I heard that There story. was another woman who said that her husband was given one of these pills as a sleep aid. Hmm. He also never had a history of mental illness, never had a history of depression. And one night he woke up, said, I've got this feeling that I'm outside of my body. Fifteen minutes later, he had hung himself. Also, no history of depression, no history of suicidal tendencies. It's the medications that are messing with people's brains. 
And I know there's a lot of crazy chemicals that you can mix up and put into a pill form and give to people, and you, you never really know what it's going to do to them. Some of these haven't been tested very long at all, but right. I thought that most of the suicidal tendencies came once you stopped taking it. No, not necessarily. And then there's also the kids that shoot up schools. A lot of time, those guys are on the antidepressants. Yeah. So toll-free number 855-450-FREE. Just to go back to the beginning of his story... And we didn't get a whole lot of detail from him because, you know, it was kind of a long story. But in the beginning of his story, when he was just walking down the sidewalk and the police officer pulls up beside him, hey, I need to talk to you. Stop. He could have just kept silent and kept walking, he couldn't he? could have likely have continued walking, although if an or- officer orders you to stop, mm, you know, you might want to slow down or stop or at the very least Say something like, oh, I gotta, I've got to be somewhere. Thanks, but but no thanks. I don't have time for, uh, for a chat. I read a story about a guy that was killed by cops because he didn't stop to talk to them. Yeah. He was deaf right. and had no clue somebody was telling him to stop from behind him. I don't know if that was the same story, but there was a guy who was in that situation in Seattle, Washington. He was on uh, sitting on a just sitting down on a street corner basically on a stoop or something like that uh he had a knife in his hand and he was whittling some wood and different story different story okay so this guy was whittling some wood he was half deaf in the other ear he had a headphones and uh the cops some cop came up behind him started shouting at him to put the knife down and within six seconds shot him to death yeah oh my goodness uh, so you're right the city you know, of seattle actually wound up uh, settling for, I think, one and a half million dollars with his family. Mm. But money can't bring back someone. No. That's just no, ter- it can't. Like, I, I just feel like these police officers that are killing people because they're being ignored must have real security issues. <laughs> like, well, real authority issues, too. Their wife doesn't listen to them when they're at home, and this is what they imagine. I don't know. So when he was approached by the officer... You know, like you're pointing out, eh, it probably would behoove you to at least stop and entertain briefly Wave whatever the hell good evening. wants to happen. Um, but to bring out your camera, first and foremost, please have some sort of recording device on you everywhere you go. If you do, then at the very least, you can punch up. If you've got a smartphone, you can install Bambuser on there, B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R. It's free software. Get that configured before you go out onto the streets so you can just hit one button and then two buttons and you're recording. Um, Hold the camera up and start recording the officer as he gets out of his car and approaches you. And then, uh, you know, basically, once he starts asking you questions, you don't have to answer his questions. You can ask your own questions back like, am I being detained? Yes, you are. Well, what is what for? What's the reasonable, articulable suspicion uh, upon which you are detaining me? Well, and while that is great advice, I'm not discounting the advice. If you're intoxicated, then you're probably not going to be at your fullest cognitive function True. to remember to pull out your camera and ask certain questions. I don't care. If you are, look, I've seen intoxicated people do cop blocking before. It's not usually the best of conversations. Sometimes they get a little loud and boisterous. But if you're practiced enough at when you see a cop, you pull your camera out, it'll become a secondhand nature sort of thing, and you won't have to think about it. Just in the same way that people who have guns on their hips should practice pulling the gun and drawing and aiming the gun over and over again so they have sort of this reflex, this habit. Uh, people who have cameras should make a practice of recording the police when they see the police. That way you won't forget when the cops are approaching you and it's your turn. So asking questions like, am I being detained? Am I free to go? Officer, I don't have time for your questions. I'm just going to go. I'm going to go on here now. And, you know, you have a nice night. Thanks. Uh, Of course, the more you talk, the more he might make the claim that you're obviously drunk. So, you know, again, keeping your conversation to the bare, bare minimum uh, would be appropriate. In fact, you don't have to answer his questions. You could just look at him if you wanted to. (laughs) Well, no, you, you do have to vocalize your right to remain silent. That's a good point. There was a Supreme Court case about that, wasn't there? If you yes. don't vocalize it, it's not there. And in some states, you have to identify yourself, yes. apparently, as well. So your mileage may vary, but at the very least, don't answer their questions. It's not going to help you out. And try to move along as soon as you can. Hour number three is on the way. This is Free Talk Live. <laughs> 
When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch solid pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for 49 cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Do you remember when summer road trips meant loading up the family in the car and playing hours of I Spy and license plate bingo? I found Alaska. America's Best Value Inn invites you to share stories and photos from memorable summer trips now through September 15th at americasbestvalueinn.com. You'll be entered for a chance to win free stays at any of our 1,000 hotels, gift certificates from TA and Petro Stopping Centers, and other fun prizes. Share your memories and make your own this summer at America's Best Value Inn. I Spy and ABVI. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.46 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,295 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $600. Antiwar.com reports, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon was shocked and appalled yesterday with the news that Israeli forces attacked a UN-backed school full of refugees in the Gaza Strip. At least 16 civilians were confirmed killed in the attack and around 200 wounded. The school was one of several designated UN shelters in the Gaza Strip, and the UN says they sent precise coordinates of all the shelters to the Israeli military, and not just so they could target them. The Israeli military has refused to either confirm or deny hitting the school, but said it was possible because they did fire at a school, which they insisted was Hamas's fault. The Israeli military also claimed to have informed the United Nations that they were going to attack the school. Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman, never afraid to make a bad situation worse, not only insisted that Hamas was operating near the school, which is the military's claim, but claimed the UN was storing rockets for Hamas in the school openly. Israel has been demanding hundreds of thousands of Gazan civilians leave their soon-to-be-leveled homes, but are not letting them leave the Gaza Strip and are attacking literally every town there, so there really is no place for the refugees to go. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports, states with established Central American immigrant communities have received the most children released to sponsors this year after being arrested unaccompanied at the U.S.-Mexico border, according to data released by the federal government on Thursday. In all, 30,340 unaccompanied children have been released to sponsors so far this year, often to their parents. 
The agency did not break down the numbers by nationality, but the vast majority were from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. The numbers mirror well-established migration patterns of Central Americans living in the U.S. Miami-Dade County in Florida is already home to the largest number from Honduras, followed by Harris County, Texas, according to a Pew Hispanic Center analysis of 2010 census data. Los Angeles is home to the largest number of people from El Salvador, followed by Harris County, Texas, and Montgomery County, Maryland. Los Angeles and Harris counties are the top two destinations for Guatemalans, followed by Cook County, Illinois, which includes Chicago. More than 57,000 unaccompanied children were arrested by Border Patrol from October through June, mostly in the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas. Of those, nearly 29% were from Honduras, 24.5% from Guatemala, and 22% from El Salvador. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. Six Dollar Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Shop Six Dollar Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, Fresh off the second brawl in the nation's parliament so far this week, Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk announced his resignation and the intentions of the outgoing coalition to disband and push snap elections later this year. The current coalition is built around the assorted Western and ultranationalist blocs and collapsed when far-right Svoboda and the Democratic Alliance for Reform both withdrew, primarily with the goal of forcing a new election. The idea is that the new elections would eliminate a number of opposition members members of parliament, with the party of regions likely to lose a lot of its representation if the eastern portion of the nation, which is still in the midst of a war for secession, can't vote. This is the party of regions primary power bloc. Beyond them, the outgoing ruling bloc is hoping to knock the communist party out of parliament entirely and is pushing for a full-scale ban on the party on allegations of their financing the secessionist rebels. Yesterday's brawl saw ultranationalists attacking the communist members of parliament. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Republicans back a plan for universal lawn care, and an RC car works up the courage to approach a group of girls. And now a recap of the week's news for those who like to waste their summers surfing the internet. Fall, the long-running series of shorter days and cooler nights, was canceled this week after nearly three billion seasons on Earth. The classic period of the year, which once occupied the coveted slot between summer and winter, will be replaced by new stifling humidity levels and near-constant sunshine. A shiny, bobbing object in the water is generating fascination among members of the fish community, who have described it as pleasingly wiggly and minnow-esque. Aquatic experts say that decisive action must be taken against the object very soon. In local news, just when 27-year-old Andrew Sheets didn't think his vacation could get any better, a rerun of Spin City came on. And in other headlines, a bee stuck between the screen and front door is going f***ing nuts. And a water skier lets go of the crossbar to greet those not currently water skiing. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do, dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. With you in studio tonight, Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. Uh, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about this evening. I had mentioned us a video clip at the beginning of the show and or earlier on in the show, and we hadn't gotten to play it yet. So I want to jump into that here. It's from WNYT, New York. It's uh, News Channel 13 out of Albany. actually got a link to this from somebody who recently moved to New Hampshire from Albany, and he was just kind of reflecting on how bad things are in New York compared to here in New Hampshire, where it's a lot more free. And uh, one of the things you can definitely do in New Hampshire is stand outside of a jail and record video. I've never had a problem with that. I've recorded video of uh, you know t- multiple jails in New Hampshire, and it hasn't been an issue. But in New York, things are a little bit different. Even if you're a professional news crew. Now, normally when you're a pro news crew, you get the big camera, you know, the humongous kind of news crew pro camera. Yep. 
Usually there's like a logo of the news agency that's on the side news of the camera. News Team 9. Yeah, you usually know what you're what you're dealing with. And uh, so this guy, uh, th- th- this cop, that I don't mean cop's not even the right word. He's a corrections officer uh, who comes up to harass this news crew from News Channel 13. I don't know if he knew who he was dealing with. Maybe he did and he just didn't care. And, you know, he was in authoritarian authoritarian mode and he just wanted to flex his authority and prove these guys that he's in charge of this mountain, wherever it was they were. Grant Cottage is where it was, where Ulysses S. Grant spent his final days. Here's the audio report. Channel 13 crew was threatened with arrest today. It happened as they were working on a story about the historic cottage in Wilton, where President Ulysses S. Grant spent his final days. Grant's cottage is located on Mount McGregor, near the now-closed correctional facility. Corrections employees who are still working at the empty prison (laughs) made every attempt to stop Mark Mulholland from doing his job. And Mark shows us what happened now, live from our Saratoga newsroom. We're going to get to that here. But just remember, this is a closed prison. So no prisoners are there, presumably. Not even open to the public? Right. Presumably, it will no longer be open. Well, there's nobody there. I mean, only the workers are there for some reason. It must have been recently closed. But uh, even if somebody were to make the argument that this is a national uh, place, we need to have protection, there's terrorism out there, we can't have people taking pictures of prisons, this isn't even an, an operating facility. I think it's more so a historical uh, landmark that they're trying the to prison? protect. Maybe. No. Uh, the, if that's where Ulysses S. Grant spent no, his no, 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 not the prison. So Just you've the got area? The, there's the Grant Cottage, which is on the same mount, Mount McGregor. So the, the plot of land is kind of in the same vicinity, basically, but the prison is not Grant Cottage. So the news crew was there to shoot a story about this cottage. It's not exactly a news story, but it's one of those little filler stories that they'd put in uh, to fill some time. Somebody wants to do something with this cottage. We're going to go get some B-roll. I know, it just might actually it was there. They were there to shoot a uh, a reenactment of of something. So it was just kind of you know one of those little okay. nice nicey stories yeah. uh, that they were doing. And so when they were setting up their shot, one of their new you know kind of shots with the, the news anchor guy talking to the camera. The prison was in the background, and that's what brought the corrections officers out. Well, good evening, Jim and Benita. In more than 20 years in the business, I've rarely encountered anything quite like this. We were doing a story on Grant's cottage, but some corrections employees made their actions the story. (laughs) Grant's cottage is located at the top of Mount McGregor. Just yesterday was the 129th anniversary of the death here of President Ulysses S. Grant. We shot some of the reenactment Wednesday and were assigned to go back there today to get some additional shots. We were doing a piece on camera in the shadows of the empty Mount McGregor prison when a car comes speeding toward us. Oh, hey, someone's going fast. Watch your back. This... This car does really come barreling up behind this guy. I thought for sure he was going to get hit. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like he's going straight towards or very near on a trajectory towards where this uh, news anchor is standing. And that's why you hear the cameraman go, whoa, there's a guy coming up behind you. Look out. <laughs> that's very intimidating. So this dude screeches up. This is the exchange photographer Matt Soriano and I had with a man who identified himself as a corrections lieutenant. Excuse me. Yeah. Don't film me. We're doing a story about Grant's Cottage. Doesn't matter. You're not. You're on state property right now. You can't film here. You got to get the permission through Albany to film. Okay. We can. We can go shoot it from Grant's Cottage then. No, you're not up here for that. You're up here for different purposes. We're doing a. Oh, he's got them figured out already. Accusations you're, from the get-go. That's right. You are not here for that, are you? You're here for different purposes. You know how I can tell, buddy? Because you're shooting our prison. But and how only does a that make a difference? Because only a terrorist would do that, Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> They're filming. They're, it's nothing to do with the prison, I'm sure. Like, I don't nope, even know how he, at can, all. how can he assume this. It's just th- they're filming. It's not as if they're causing an uprising. They're not damaging because anyone's his, territory. His LIDAR is working very well. He, he knows when you're lying <laughs> because he is the state. But even before they lied, he came speeding up. What are they doing wrong? I mean... Maybe they they're are on state, state property, property, but and they don't have papers. He knows they don't have papers because he's got the database of who has papers and their name wasn't in it. Look, you just need to go through Albany, okay? And so he, this bureaucrat keeps passing the buck off to, hey, you need to get permission from somebody in Albany. Who you talk to in Albany, I don't know. Uh, there's probably a lot of bureaucrats in Albany. It's the state capital. 
Uh, but anyway, the, the reporter, to his credit, he is pretty steadfast on what he wants to do. On the other hand, the reporter also is, you know, he's willing to back down. He's willing to give some ground uh, to this officer. And he doesn't ask some of the questions I might like to hear asked. Like when the, uh, the, you know, the, the corrections officer makes the statement that he knows why he's there. I would have wanted to know how how do you know that exactly where where's your intel coming from what is it that you are alleging sir what are you alleging I am here to do exactly and then just be quiet and let him speak but he doesn't do that the reporter instead is just kind of slowly backing away and you know he obviously doesn't want to get arrested and I can't blame somebody for that story on Grant's cottage as it relates well, to you'll the have prison closing. Well you have to take closing. that through Albany. No, we'll just go back to Grant's cottage. And shoot. No, you're going to leave the mountain now. No, we're going to go to Grant's cottage. No, you you're can't. not. You're rolling, right? Yeah. You're telling us we can't visit a historic site? No, you're not. You're going to have to run that through Albany. <laughs> no, we don't run through Albany whether we visit a, well, a historic site. You're on state site. grounds right now. Well, we'll go to the historic site. Then. You can go up there. You can't film. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. What's your name? Lieutenant Dorn. Lieutenant what, Dorn? What's your first name? It's Lieutenant Dorn. Oh, 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 oh they My love that. My first name is Lieutenant. Yeah, they love that one, man. What's your name? Officer. That's usually the answer. Sometimes that's what you'll get from if you ask a cop their name, they'll tell you their name's officer. It's a real smart ass way to uh, to answer that question. Yeah. Aren't they required to identify themselves? Most of the time. Yeah. And by saying lieutenant, he did technically identify himself. Right, because you could pull the police uh roster and you could find out who Lieutenant right. Dorn is and get his first name from that. I remember there was a time I was in uh, Palmer, Massachusetts, recording video of a police officer who was observing some of the activists from afar. I went over to confront that officer and demand to know what his name was, and all he would give me was a number, because apparently they are not obligated to identify themselves by name. Oh, yeah, and uh, didn't you then call up his supervisor and they told you, yeah, he's officer number one? Yes. Yeah. So continuing here with the video. Look, I'm not going to go around with you on this. You're going to okay. leave the property. We will. We'll go up to the historic site. You cannot film up there. <laughs> we will go to the historic site in Georgia. Now that I appreciate. I appreciate the defiance of the uh, the news photography. He knows his rights. He's willing to back down a little bit from... He's leaving the area. They're packing the camera up. They're leaving the, the direct view of the jail and they're now going back down to wherever they were before you can't film up there oh yes we can yeah we will <laughs> yeah we're gonna do our job buddy thanks you know what jeff make sure they don't go up and call the state police have them removed have us removed from a historic site sir <laughs> so we proceeded to make our way closer to grant's cottage but another corrections employee parked his car across the road denying and blocking our access to the historic site they're in the car now trying to go back down to this historic site which is purportedly open to the public this is a news crew and a corrections officers just sitting in the middle of the road that's got to be out of spite I don't that's know. disorderly conduct if any of you and i do it if you get out in the road and you block traffic and you don't move that's disorderly that's the definition yeah. of disorderly conduct technically they're not policemen are they Co no. corrections officers are part of law enforcement but they're not policemen there's more coming up here in moments. Uh, Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts. There's more of the video coming up. Rising gas prices taking a bite out of your travel budget? Here's something to chew on. You can get more mileage from your travel dollar by staying at America's Best Value Inn, where you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, HBO, and internet at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Plus, join our free value club for room discounts, upgrades, and other instant rewards. Visit AmericasBestValueInn.com. With value in our name, you know you're getting a great deal. Yum. When leading hardwood mills have excess flooring to sell, there's only one place they go. Lumber Liquidators, America's number one specialty retailer of wood flooring. This week, get amazing deals like gorgeous three-quarter inch, solid, pre-finished Brazilian cherry hardwood for only $2.99 per square foot. Or quick-click strand bamboo for 37% less than other stores. Plus, get first quality laminate flooring for $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find your local store. Special 12-month financing is available. Hurry, these deals end Tuesday. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. 
come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan, penalties and interest killing you, Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the tax monkey now. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. 800-281-6030. That's 800-281-6030. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want, toll free at 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. More of the audio coming up uh, from ridiculous story out of Albany, New York, or out of the Albany area, the uh, Grant Cottage in Wilton, uh, which is where Ulysses S. Grant spent his final days. That's where a news crew from News Channel 13 was headed to, uh, or they, they had actually gone there one day, they were going back on the next day to shoot some more B-roll and get some other footage for a package they were putting together. One of those kind of nicey, cutesy packages about, oh, hey, look, here's people doing a reenactment. So, like, not really news. Um, but I guess it is news, technically, because reenactments don't happen. 129th often. anniversary of somebody's death isn't really news. Nah, not really. So, anyway, that's why they were there. They were recording video of the anchor saying stuff to the camera. And in the background, there was a jail. That had been closed down or was no longer an active jail, but apparently there was still some staff there. They noticed the camera crew, and one guy comes down, a lieutenant from the jail comes down, basically speeds up and like screeches his car to a halt right behind the news crew, almost hitting them. He then piles out of the car and threatens the news crew with arrest if they don't leave the entire mountain. He says they can't go. The news guy says they're going to just go back down to the Ulysses Grant Cottage and continue filming there. And he says, no, you're not. You're going to leave the entire mountain because this is state property. You're not allowed to go down there. And he was like, well, yeah, we are. We're allowed. We're, this is a free speech. You know? You'll go to Somalia. <laughs> yeah, so they, uh, they're they starting to pack up. They're leaving to go back down there, even though this guy's telling them they can't go back down there. The news crew is defiant enough to basically say, screw you, we're going to go where we want. 
Um, and at the very least, they were leaving the area where the offense of recording video of the jail happened. So they didn't, they didn't stand their ground completely. But at the very least, they did not retreat off the entire mountain. We're going to continue the video here, but I also want to remind you about how to get some modafinil from modup.net. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil at modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen are also talking about modafinil from modup.net and how it's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. At modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency so you enjoy significant results. And that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net, by the way, going to give you a discount for paying with Bitcoin. You pay with Bitcoin, you get 33% off, and you can use code FTL. Whether or not you used Bitcoin, you can use code FTL, and you get 10 free tablets with your order. So don't forget code FTL at modup.net for modafinil. That's M-O-D-U-P. Dot net. As we continue here, the ridiculous video from News Channel 13 out of Albany where the crew here that has been shooting footage outside of the jail has been threatened. And then at this point, they get in their car when the intention of going down the mount a little bit to get back to the Ulysses Grant cottage to shoot some more footage down there. Well, turns out they can't go to where they were hoping to go. Because one of the corrections officers has we blocked their path. Way closer to Grant's cottage, but another corrections employee parked his car across the road, denying and blocking our access to the historic site. So we're trying to get to Grant's cottage, and, and the state corrections officer is blocking the road. So you can see how this might deter people from trying to get to a, a prominent national historic site. Can you move up a little so we can get to Grant's cottage, please? <laughs> After several minutes, he moves his car to allow other visitors to get to and from Grant's cottage and slowly inching his car along in front of us. Ironically, once there, we noticed a film crew apparently filming a movie on the grounds of the closed prison. <laughs> on our way back down the mountain. Now, wait a minute. There was a film crew. They had papers. Shooting at the prison. And I thought that was an interesting little uh, addition, that they just kind of snuck that little statement into well, the, the package. Okay, so those people had permission. Right. And they didn't want the news people filming what was being filmed because intellectual property. Ah, uh, that's got to be it, Daryl. Mountain, as we attempted to leave, Corrections Lieutenant Doran had called the state police, asked them to detain us, and demanded our video. He's obviously leaving. I mean, he can't leave with that film. Can't leave with what? I'm what? sorry. Can't leave with the film of the jail. Oh, that, if that's I'm okay, a... buddy. We don't have film. Film went out probably two decades ago. In fact, <laughs> I don't know when news crews used film. It was probably a long, longer than two decades ago. I don't. Would uh, beta tape be that's considered film. film? Nope. That's okay. tape. Let's continue. Member of the public, and I'm taking pictures of Grant's cottage, and there is the facility in right behind it. What do you what do you do in that case? We're aware that that facility is in the background. Those photos will be confiscated. <laughs> now, the man yeah. who identified himself as Lieutenant Doran said on several occasions, if we didn't hand over the tape, he would have us arrested. After roughly an hour and calls between our newsroom leadership, state police, and the Department of Corrections, we were allowed to leave without surrendering the video we shot. What happened to freedom of the press? It's an illusion. Hold on, you've got freedom of the press. As long as you go through Albany. You mean as long as you get proper <laughs> approval. You, you've got to go through Albany. Don't, don't you remember in the copy of the U.S. Constitution that they gave you when you were a kid, there was the asterisk it's next not freedom to if all you have of the freedoms permission. that said you have freedom of this as long as you fill out all of the paperwork, uh, most of which will be done in duplicate, sometimes triplicate. No, that's... If you have to ask permission, how is that freedom? That's exactly right, Ellen. If you ask permission, you are no longer exercising a right. And if you have a right to be the press and you have a right to free speech, then in order to ask permission, you're abrogating your rights. You're, you're complicit, essentially, you're in like abrogating your rights. You're acknowledging that they have the power to tell you no. That's right. 
And that's usually what they'll tell you. When you ask permission from the government for something, they'll usually tell you no, especially if they don't like you and they don't like your editorial viewpoint. So I have to say congratulations to the guy here at, uh, at News Channel 13. I think he did a, a pretty good job. You know, for, for your average reporter yeah. uh, confronted with an authoritarian uh, sociopath who is attempting to force his way onto you and violate your rights, I think they did a pretty good job. They managed yes. to get away from the situation without being arrested, and they got the video footage as well. Plus, you know, there was some... There was probably some wrangling involved here, and I don't know if you and I would have been treated in the same way. It's likely the cops were a little more careful with how they handle this, because at the the window of the car, you hear in the very end of the footage you, the conversation with them about, we've got well, we got to take that film, and then the reporter sums up what was a longer period of time, and he says, well, over an hour through several phone calls, we were finally able to leave with the film intact. I don't know if average folks would have the same success. Level. I don't know. But one thing that I find interesting, and Ian, you were there for both of these interactions at the Palmer Court when I went down to film two of your hearings down there, mm -hmm. and I went through the processes that one needs to go through in Massachusetts to take a camera into court. The first time, they made me sit in the car for an hour before they determined that I was media. <laughs> right. I sent a letter to their supervisor the next time they rolled out the red carpet and said, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll come back with more here in moments. Toll free number 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. 
from wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you'd like. Toll-free number, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. All you have to do is drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features there. If you like Free Talk Live and you want more people to hear Free Talk Live, then please become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. Your AMP dollars uh, will be uh, they will be matched by some generous donators, and that matching pr- uh, pledge is going on for the next few months. So you can sign up and have your AMP dollars doubled over at amp.freetalklive.com. And uh, and even if you know even if we meet our goal and we usually do every single month for the doubling, uh, it still makes a big difference when you contribute because the five your five bucks a month helps me pay Daryl, uh, and Daryl helps me a lot doing affiliate relations. Uh, calling radio stations, bringing new stations on board. We've been calling busily the last couple of days, all the Andy Dean affiliates out there, which is, you know, dozens, a few dozen uh, stations, several dozen, I guess. He's leaving the airwaves in two weeks. There was another show, Jason Lewis, that just left the airwaves, or I think is leaving the airwaves at the end of this month. He's got about another week. I've got some callbacks on Monday and Tuesday of stations that are waiting until the, you know, last minute to figure out what they're doing so that's what we're doing i mean that's what we do on a daily basis here and uh, your amp dollars make that possible it makes it possible to reach out to radio stations across the country and bring the ideas of freedom to the airwaves on both conservative and progressive talk radio stations to bring these ideas to different people who are not expecting to hear them necessarily and i think that's an important thing it's an important role that free talk live fills in a way that no other show out there in the liberty com- community fills uh so you can help us with that the amp program also goes to fund things like satellite you know buying satellite time uh, on international satellites so people around the world can hear us we want to do more of that in the future by advertising online to uh, like through google adwords to bring new listeners to our website and tune into our live streams and podcasts so there's a lot of different ways we can make that five bucks really we can really put it to work in spreading the ideas of freedom and you get perks too like the amp only call in lines you get access to those the amp only uh, podcast which doesn't have the regular commercials that our regular podcast does and the brand newish amp only facebook group which has been very very popular very useful so go to amp.freetalklive.com you can uh, hook yourself up there with any major credit card through paypal or use visa or mastercard right there on our website that's amp dot freetalklive.com we were talking about this news crew in albany new york who was threatened by an officious bureaucrat and this isn't uncommon photography is not a crime.com is a website that catalogs instance after instance after instance of uh, bureaucrats threatening photographers in many cases for very similar things like this for simply taking a picture or video footage of some sort of governmental installation, a jail or whatever. And it's actually, I've seen it happen with a jail on more than one occasion. Not in my personal life, not in New Hampshire. It's never been an issue for me here. But other people in other places have definitely been threatened uh, by these bureaucrats. And as Ellen was pointing out, if you're asking permission, it is not a right. And if you want to have rights, you have to exercise them. And that means, to me at least... That means in the face of an authoritarian, sociopathic bureaucrat, 
in the face of their threats to stand your ground, or at the very least, to back down slowly. Uh, and I think that's what this guy in the video in Albany did. He did back away a little bit, but he at the same time asserted his rights. He let the officer know he was going to continue exercising his rights and that he was just going to do it somewhere else. Um, I think that that was a, a smart move on on his part, and I hope that we'll see more people behave similarly when confronted by the police because they're not stopping. Obviously, there's plenty of you know there's plenty of court decisions that make it clear that you have the right to record government bureaucrats in any place. In this case, he wasn't even recording government bureaucrats or in any public place. He was in public on a public mountaintop where this jail facility happened to be located, and he was recording. And there's no crime there. Not ever. even intentionally recording the jail facility, but one thing that he did, and it's something that I recommend to other people, because I know that some people say, you should never talk to a cop. I will tell people, talk to them enough to where you get out of the situation in the manner that you want to mm -hmm. get out. So if by your explaining an action can prevent you from going to jail, then explain what is going on. But do the officers have uh, an expectation to, uh, you know, tell you what they're accusing you of or what law you're breaking? Like in in this inter or in this video, he basically just told them to leave. He didn't say why. Yeah, and he never asked. And that's the failure on the part of the news photographer. Right. To not actually, or the journalist in this case, to not actually ask, well, what what law are you citing, sir? What what is the uh, the statute that claims you can arrest me for taking a picture of this jail facility? I'd like to know. Go, yeah, go that, ahead, look it up. That we'll would wait. have been a wise move because I don't know if he could have answered that. Of course not. He's totally pulling this out of his butt. He is completely waving around his authoritarian penis, and uh, and that's really all this is. Yeah, it seems like it was just uh, out of spite. I don't know. He seemed very too angry for the situation, and there was, there was no reason for that. There was nothing that called for him speeding up behind this guy as if they were going to try and run off. No way. Scary <laughs> stuff. These guys are trying to film our inmates. How Which dangerous. Which they didn't have because the jail was closed. But even if the jail was open... You've got a jail in a public place. If you want privacy, even bureaucrats should know that you have to take effort. You know, you get, if you want your jail to be private, put it back on some sort of forested land where nobody can stand on a mountaintop or wherever and take pictures of it. Right. Well, maybe, uh, you know, they didn't have that option. They just now well, they're they're going to super enforce, you know, people not ridiculous. recording there unless they have papers. It's it's an outrage. Nobody should be treated in the way that this uh, this guy was treated. But my my real point on this is you've got to exercise your rights, whether it's recording video, whether it's speech, whether it's guns, weapons, whatever your favorite rights are, the ones that really turn you on. Because not everybody's into packing heat. Not everybody's into recording video. But whatever it is that you're into, you need to uh, to make a stand for it when threatened. Because if you if you ask permission, if you go and you get a permit to protest, you don't have free speech. You've just begged permission to speak freely. You've begged permission to be allowed to say the things the government wants to allow you to say. Um, if you are uh, begging permission to carry a firearm, uh, then you aren't exercising a right either in that particular case. Now, I don't blame somebody who goes and begs permission under the fear of the threat of violence. I don't blame somebody for that. I can understand self-preservation. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to go to jail. I, that's why I don't blame this guy for backing down, you know, going down the mountain a little bit when the officers were getting threatening. Right. And some people could say, Ian, that you have somehow begged for permission because you have registered free keen with mm. the supreme court in new hampshire to be able to film in the courts in new hampshire supposedly without the need to fill out a notice every time but it seems like every new courthouse you go to they tell you no no you have to fill this out it's procedure yeah and then you always cite but no your rules say that that procedure has <laughs> been changed if i have this piece of paper and here's this piece of paper no no but you still need to fill out this other one yeah, that pretty much happens. Um, you're talking about the media registration, yes. which New Hampshire offers, and the idea is it'll be a time saver because normally you go into a court and they want you to fill out a notice to let them know you're recording, even though you've already told them that you're going to record, they want it on paper, etc. But how much of an oxymoron is that, that you have to you know, fill out this registration to video 
any videotape anything. Well, it's, vo- it's ridiculous. The, the media registration is voluntary. Wait, media registration is voluntary right. in New Hampshire. Can't you just be independent media, not registrate, not registered yes. anywhere? Just walk into a courtroom and you cannot film? walk into a courtroom in New Hampshire and just record most of the time. It really ultimately depends on the judge and the security, right. so your mileage may vary. But typically, they will say something to you. The other day in uh, court for Rich Paul's hearing, they were asking everybody with a camera if they were registered. They didn't ask them to prove they were registered, so it was just more of a formality than anything else. Um, we'll come back with more here. Toll-free number is 855 free. Your calls about whatever's on your mind. Then, a man thrown off of a flight for tweeting. Maybe we'll have time for the Uber story as well. You can bring up whatever you want in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live, which are coming up next at 855 free. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. You've been lied to, lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenevention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenevention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenevention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. 
You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything in the remaining moments right here, toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. The us includes me, Ian. Ellen. And Daryl. Ellen is the host of ALP. She's one of the hosts of ALP. And uh, it's kind of on hiatus at the moment as the hosts, uh, you and Allie, are kind of uh, hammering out some uh, f- some issues with life. You're getting a new place to live. You're moving. Yeah, well, I mean, Allie kind of lives far away, and there's no studio equipment that we have access yeah. to right now. So I'm going to be moving this week as well. So hopefully after... Somewhere else in New Hampshire. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, hopefully after I get settled down, we can figure out what we're going to be recording with and get the site back up because I noticed that... The site's down? Nobody renewed <gasps> it, so oh, no. we're going to have to put that back up. Buckle. I know, it is terrible, but once <laughs> once, once I finish moving and I get settled in, I will take care of all of this right, because so I really miss recording and doing show. ALP. I, I it loved it show. so much. ALP, so I'm, I, I was going to give your website, but now there's no point. Cause well, you can still down. look us up on Facebook can you download the shows though, or was were those being hosted? Were those being hosted on your website or hosted by a podcast host? They were being hosted on our website and streamed mm. on UStream. So, Zing. um, we don't have we'll any let you shows know. up. Yeah, we'll I mean, let you know. We when will ALP keep comes you updated. Back. Ian, yes. you might actually have the archives now. Actually, I don't. I don't have any archives. If anything, I have one archive of ALP, and that would be it. I would have the most recent show. As uh, the the last show on the network would still be there. Oh right, because your thing automatically deletes after thirty days. Uh, no, no, no. ALP was uh was live on on LRN.FM. Oh right. So uh, LRN.FM is my internet network uh, that essentially is a live streaming network. The network does not provide archival services for the shows. That right. Are on. No, I I thought that they had done a couple of shows. I After they, they were had, live, but I had that not picked you the had podcast. downloaded. No, I had not picked up their podcast because I, you know, I wanted to make sure it was going to keep going. <laughs> okay, it didn't. <laughs> so okay, I, I thought you had off. downloaded the last couple of episodes. Mm-mm. No, so we'll uh, we'll keep you in the loop when ALP comes back. But FPP.cc is uh, Daryl's project, and that is online. Yes, that is online. As is FPPRadio.com, where you can find all of the archives for the various shows that I do. And you do a few different things. There's Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. You do also a, which is a long form show. Yes. And then there's a short form, five minute long newscast that you do daily, seven days a week, which is an awesome level of dedication. 173 consecutive days now, I believe. Almost half a year. That's great. And you are also doing publishing of books and more stuff. Go check it out at fpp.cc as we go to Nathan in Texas on Skype. Hello, Nathan. Hey, everyone. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Well, you mentioned a fact or figure earlier about a third of the Americans during the Revo- American Revolution supporting Britain, and I tracked it down to a uh, letter that James Adams, sorry, John Adams, wrote to James Lloyd in 1815, hmm. where he was talking about the sentiments of the American people, and he said something like, uh, "A third of the people are in favor of England and don't like France. A third of the people are more in favor of France, and a third are indifferent." Yeah, well, people are always going to have different opinions on things. You can never hope for everybody to agree on anything. That much is for sure. I'm glad you did the uh, the footwork there. What else did you want to share tonight? Um, well, no, I thought it was interesting because, uh, oh, and by the way, Ellen, I'm sorry to hear about your website. If, if there's anything uh, I can do to help, uh, you know, I, I do a little work on websites. But, you uh, can buy the domain right now so that you. nobody else does. Oh, wait, the, the domain's available? Don't do that, please. Yeah, no, he can hold it for you until you get around to doing it. Wait, the domain expired? That's, That's what, what she just yes, said. Yes, correct. Oh, I thought it was maybe hosted the hosting by WordPress. Was... Oh, I thought maybe the hosting was was gone. So you're saying no. So wait, the therefore website... then the WordPress site would still be up, right? Whatever, like alp.wordpress or yes. something. Yes. Yeah, so I can st- I can still go back to the WordPress site and see all of our episodes there. Well, where but is that's the, just where does the WordPress? What's that's the That's because I'm a you know a user for this WordPress account. So 
I can see the archives, but nobody else but can. But this doesn't WordPress. I've never bought a WordPress site through WordPress.com. I I run WordPress sites all over the place. I mean, Freekeen, LRN.fm, these are all WordPress-based sites. But that's like an install on our server of right. WordPress, whereas you're saying you got it from WordPress.com, right? Mm -hmm. Don't they normally give you like a subdomain like alpshow.wordpress.com? Right, yeah, and she's saying that right she now. can see that. But the average person can't go there? No, because they would have to log into my account to do that. That doesn't make sense to me. Why would I, they... I don't think so. I will check that right now. Uh, yeah, what is yeah. What is the URL that... People can https know that part. Uh, colon forward the or backslash alp show dot wordpress dot com. All right, Daryl's gonna try that out. We'll see if the site's actually still online. This is bad thing when you you don't want to let a domain name expire ever because a lot of times, Daryl, the WordPress is forwarding to alp show dot com that says. Failing. The domain has expired. So there may be a setting of some sort. There Ellen. is. I can help her with the tech stuff okay, after cool. the show. Cool. That's good. But Great, I mean, just, just for people that, you know, a little bit of information, a little bit of basic info on web design. If you let a domain name expire, it's very risky because a lot of times there are companies who will sweep up expired domain names and they'll squat on them. So yes. we see this all the time with radio stations, Daryl. When we call these stations during the daytime to talk to these guys about Free Talk Live, frequently we'll go and check on their websites. And I can tell you there's been plenty of times where a radio station is, you know, maybe they fired their webmaster and nobody was there to do the renewal. And uh, renewal time comes up because it's a yearly thing typically. You can buy more than a year at a time. But yeah, a lot all of, of my domains are set to expire at a minimum in 2017. Yeah, mine are 2018 or something like that. I bought a 10-year chunk. But, you know, the average person, they, they don't want to spend a bunch of money on their website. They just want to buy one year and then they'll buy another one the next year, that kind of thing. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. There's just... Oh, the one-year time limit was up. Well, because a lot of times I, you'll go to a, a website and it will have nothing whatsoever to do with, uh, you know, the the original site. It's like, you know, in Japanese or there's weird stuff on it and maybe even uh, malware or dangerous, you know, viruses and things. So letting a domain name expire is a very bad idea. And I would recommend that you re re reacquire that domain name as quickly as you possibly can. Nathan, what else did you want to share? Oh, well, I thought it was interesting that there was apparently some kind of myth you'll hear on the History Channel about how like a third of the people were British loyalists or something. <laughs> it's true that a lot of loyalists uh, did move to Canada after the war, but, um, well, yeah, I think the loyalist figure is probably more like 20 based on a study I found. It's, uh, I mean, if you think about it, people who were loyalists in 1776 probably weren't mostly taking up arms against um, the Continental Army, right? I mean, most of them probably just went along to get along. Yeah, I mean, that's what you can expect from most people in general, which is why I think the Free State Project is such a great concept. We don't need to have, uh, you know, 100% of people agreeing with the ideas of liberty in order to be very successful here in New Hampshire with the idea of moving freedom-loving people all to the same, you know, to a lot of them to the same place and getting active. We just need to have enough people to foment change to get the kind of the ball rolling, and then once the ideas of liberty are popular, they don't have to be popular by a majority or anything like that. Once they're popular enough, they'll become acceptable and accepted regularly, and people will just go along to get along, and they'll you know say things like, oh, yeah, I was always a libertarian, even though they never yeah, did this, anything. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, this letter by John Adams, I would recommend uh, people read if they can find it. Um, What's I'm it not called? sure how I found it. Is there a name? Uh, it's just letter to James Lloyd, 1815. I found it on old.libertyfund.org. Thanks, so. Nathan, for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Uh, Ellen, you've got a story about a man thrown off a flight for a tweet or two. Or uh, yes. Uh, this article I found was actually on independent.co.uk. The so, UK Independent. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, Fairly large paper. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter has long been the go-to platform for customers to vent their fury at bad customer service, and usually a complaint on social media will lead to a swift apology, if nothing else. Sure, we've seen it time and time again. But for Minneapolis man Duff Watson, who says he and his two children were ejected from their flight for a tweet criticizing Southwest Airlines service, the father of two, who is an A-list member of the airline, tweeted his disappointment in the airline when his children, aged 9 and 6, were denied priority boarding alongside him for the flight from Denver to Washington. 
After a terse exchange with the gate agent, who would not let the children through with their priority boarders despite them apparently being able to board with their father on numerous occasions, Mr. Watson walked to the back of the queue line to board with his children. Hmm. I tweeted something like, wow, rudest agent in Denver, Kimberly, Kimberly S., gate C-39, not happy. Having made his complaint, Mr. Watson waited to board the plane with his children. The family found their seats and sat down, only to hear their names on the flight broadcast, telling them to get off the plane. I did not know what was going on. I thought we left something or we were on the wrong flight. Wow. And they they saw it that quick? Yeah, apparently so. He was kicked off the flight, but then after he deleted the tweet, he was let on, and it took probably half an hour for that to happen. Unbelievable. I mean, just, I liked Southwest, and I still do, because the the rest of them are worse. He we'll says he'll never with, fly them again. Well, the rest of them are worse. See you tomorrow night. Free Talk Live. Are you- sea anemones are the most disgusting of all tidal creatures. Their thick tentacle arms are engorged with the collected urine that makes up much of tide pools. Whale urine, fish urine, otter urine, crab urine, all sucked up by the moon and deposited in these natural outhouses. Clownfish share a symbiotic relationship with sea anemones. The clownfish cleans the sea anemone. In exchange, the anemone sprays urine on the face of the clownfish. It's one fetishistic delight. Contrary to popular belief, sea urchins are not in fact animals. Indeed, they are not alive at all. They are simply the clumped together leavings of the ocean's denizens. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to move to the free state, you're looking for some real estate well i know a guy who's really great it's the realtor mark warden do you want a home with 20 acres a lakeside cabin any takers for renters buyers and sellers too mark warden is the guy for you porcupinerealestate.com you can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 25th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,299, silver opened at $20.86, and Bitcoin is trading around $598.18. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code Liberty and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. In the news, Texans for Accountable Government will be having their next meeting July 28th at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub at 7 p.m. On the agenda is Heather Fazio from Marijuana Policy Project, Rachel Canny on winning elections, and Dr. Norman Horn will discuss the upcoming Christians for Liberty event with special guest Dr. Laura Presley, city council candidate for District 4. The Liberty Beat's own Justin Armand will be emceeing the event July 28, 7 p.m. at Sherlock's Baker Street Pub. Texans for Accountable Government is a political action committee dedicated to creating a more free and prosperous Texas. More info at tagtexas.org. Christianity and Liberty come together in a first-of-its-kind conference planned for Saturday, August 2nd, on the campus of Austin's St. Edwards University. Norman Horn is the founder and chief editor of LibertarianChristians.com. Well, it has been the desire of a lot of my readers for some time to have the opportunity to come together and meet a lot of 
Christian libertarians all in one place. But it's no surprise that people wanted to see this happen, especially as we've been growing our presence in various corners of the web, like at our Christian libertarian Facebook group. The all-day conference kicks off at 9 o'clock on the morning of August 2nd and will conclude with an evening social at 8.30. This is an opportunity to hear a number of Christian libertarian speakers talk about our views of faith and politics working in tandem. We have a number of great opportunities to fellowship together, to meet new people, and to discuss our views and encourage each other and equip each other to be better advocates for liberty from a Christian point of view. Peripheral events are also planned, with all liberty-minded individuals, not just Christians, invited to attend. Registration details and a full conference schedule can be found at libertarianchristians.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at coreymoreshow.com. And support comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat. For Friday, July 25th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com.